Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hey, Anas was there. Oh, and it's lurking there. Subhanallah. <laughs> 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 Exit stage oh. right. Mashallah. So, yeah, for all of the brothers and sisters who don't know Brother Anis, that was Brother Anis, Mashallah, without whom uh, EF Dao, I think, would soon come to a standstill, Mashallah, with all his hard work with the uh, videos and, and all so many other logistical things that we do, I uh, have to do at EF Dao, Mashallah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Hamza, how are you doing? You all right? Yeah, man, I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Are you doing are you? on your phone already? I'm just saying, where in the world is Ijaz Ahmed? Ah, okay. So, brothers and sisters, welcome to episode uh, 21 of the Perfect Storm. Uh, this particular um, uh, stream is for non-Muslims. And what you do is you come on the stream, tell us what you believe, why you believe it. And we put your belief uh, through the storm, basically. And we sort of challenge your belief as to why you feel uh, that you can substantiate your belief in the way that you do. Uh, Christians are welcome, obviously, uh, and it gives them an opportunity to perhaps talk about um, aspects of their faith uh, in terms of why they believe what they believe. Why do they believe the Bible is, for example, the word of God uh, or why should they why should we follow the Bible uh, um, uh, as the word of God? Similarly, if you're Jew, Hindu, atheist uh, and you believe that there isn't a god and you believe that this universe could have somehow come about by itself uh, then you're also welcome to come onto the stream uh, so this is not for muslims uh, this particular stream is uh, is for for non-muslims uh, how are you uh, doing hamza did you see the uh, mamad hijab and ayan hirsi um uh, podcast or video um i was watching it today actually and um, it, basically, everything she says is from her own opinion. Yeah, everything exactly. What Job said was from like the Quran, Sunnah, Pew reports, academic uh, yeah. literature, etc. Cetera, et cetera, she was et like, I feel this, and I feel that, and I think this, and I think that. Yeah, yeah. And it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing, actually. Uh, it was embarrassing because I think Mamadi Jam made a very valid point. Uh, you know, why. Should we even listen to uh Slalukum brother Ijaz? Walaikum as salam, guys. What's up? How are you doing? How are you doing? The Sheikh from well. Canada. Do you just dox me? You turn into Hamza. Why is that is that is that doxing telling you what country you come from for God's sake? Kind of narrows it down, doesn't it? Narrows it down. Does it really? Yeah, yeah. People are hunting him in the islands and they're oh not, my God. not there. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Okay, so uh, Jazz, we were just discussing uh, the interview um, that Jordan Peterson's daughter did of uh, Mahmoud Hijab and Ayan Hirsi. I don't know if you had a chance mm -hmm. to see it. I have not. I've seen clips of it. It okay. looks good, but it seems like they were interviewed separately. If I'm yeah, so so one of the things that I thought was very frustrating, quite frankly, was that Ayan Hirsi, who is somebody. Uh, you know, uh, as he puts it, an apple polisher for, uh, you know, the um, far right, let's say, uh, and uh, haters of Islam, um, has no qualification in Islamic studies, is not an expert. But she, was a, she was a Muslim, so she's an expert. Well, well, even though that she was a Muslim, yet she doesn't know the difference between Surah Fatiha being a chapter or a verse. Uh, uh, she's supposed to be an ex-Muslim, yet she doesn't know what a, a hadith and a Quran, the difference between the Quran and the hadith, because she, in her book, makes an error, apparently, of, of saying it's uh, it's from the Quran or it's from hadith, when it's, in fact, the opposite. Uh, she's an expert, yet she doesn't know anything about uh, Sharia law, which she claims that she knows about. Um, you know, So she's a nobody, basically, when it comes to Islamic academia or knowledge. She doesn't quote academic sources when she makes her arguments like Hamza you just alluded to she says I think that this is what women are going through and the, the law needs to change to free and the women stuff like she talks about sexual violence against m women from from Muslim men yeah I think the worst thing she said has she the read the statistics she has she seen the statistics of no, what well, goes on in America this, and in England this was the worst thing she said she said this is so far she said after speaking to Muslim men, 
they said that if they were back in Afghanistan or whatever, whichever country they came from, and there was a woman uh, uncovered this way, they wouldn't be reprimanded for abusing her. Mm. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> what, <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> I can't imagine, like, like realistically, anyone said anything to our Muslim wives and us men not reacting to it. Yeah, exactly. Like, do these people live in an imaginary world where Muslim men don't exist and have like love and protection of their own wives? Exactly. Exactly. What, what's going on? Yeah, I would exactly. like to see someone speak harsh to Hamza's wife in front of Hamza. That would be the end of that person. Yeah. So, in what world? I mean, he sells scarves for God's sake. Yeah, he's the right man to speak to. <laughs> yeah, uh, guys in the backstage, if you are Muslim, please uh, respect the format of the stream. If you don't know, I, you know, I'm not trying to sort of uh, uh, reprimand you, but please just realize this is for non Muslims. This stream is about you telling us what you believe, and then we challenge your belief. Obviously, if you're Muslim, mm -hmm. we're not going to challenge your belief, so that would be. Uh, the exact opposite of the of what we're trying to do here. So if you're Muslim and you still want to come on because you want to say Jazakallah khair brothers, I just wanted to say salam. That's this is not the stream. Please come on to the Dawa clinic. That's for uh, the arena. You do that on the arena, which happens next week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> flood flood the arena with those sort of comments. But because with oh, this, why you're here, Rijaz? You want to join? You already asked me. And I said yes twice. <laughs> Did I? You asked me, Wallahi, you asked me, uh, I think when you were doing the stream last week towards the end, and I okay. popped up in the chat, okay. and you're like, Ijaz, you're the first, you want to come on next week? I'm like, yeah, like, okay, cool, good, I'll add you okay. to the list. So it's you, Hashim, Sheikh Mohammed, uh, no, mm -hmm. you, Mansour, Sheikh Mohammed, and uh, uh, Andalusi, Asadullah. MashaAllah, okay, nice, that nice sounds life. like a stellar lineup. And so guys, if you're in the backstage, if you're Muslim, please, this is not the stream for you. If you're Mustafa, Muslim, Mustafa, we know you're Muslim, bro. Just say if Salaam you, if you on would like to come on the stream and you're non you're a non-Muslim, you're welcome. But please have your camera on so we can identify you. Uh, because we do need to identify you before we, you'll be allowed onto the stream because uh we want to obviously safeguard everybody's uh uh everyone's uh you know uh yeah respect. We don't know, we, we don't need anything burned into our retinas. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, so going back to, I mean, so guys, if you haven't seen the debate between, uh, well, it wasn't a debate, and this was what this was what I found very unusual, actually, because as I say, she's unqualified. Uh, Ayan Hirsi has no real knowledge of Islam. She quotes uh, 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 or or makes uh, assertions based upon her own uh, uh, an anecdotal experiences and opinions. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet she is uh, respected widely within Western uh, uh, Western countries as some form of, uh, you know, a viable and reliable uh, source of information when it comes to understanding Islam and Muslims. Uh, and I find that really unusual. And so it would be like really, uh, you know, wanting a neurosurgeon and then going to your fishmongers, you know, who is descaling the salmon before you know, you, uh, you 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 cook it at home and you invite him on a show to talk about uh, neuroscience, you know, completely unqualified to be able to do that. Um, but I think what it is, it does, is that, you know, there are people in the West who already have this predisposition to uh, be suspicious about Islam and Muslims, have a very negative opinion about Islam and Muslims because they've been programmed this way by the uh, general right wing media. Right. And misinformation that they that they read, that when Ayan Hirsi comes along, you know, uh, somebody who claims to be an ex-Muslim claims to know about these issues. Uh, that as long as she reinforces their own predispositions, they're quite happy to uh, keep inviting her to talk about these things uh, and pushing her books. Um, but it's it's astonishing that they don't actually first say, actually, you know what. What is your qualification uh, to talk about this subject that you apparently are so expert at, at doing? And they don't seem to do that, <laughs> you know, which, which I find very, very odd, really. Um, Shoaib, if you're a Muslim in the uh, backstage, please, you need to uh, leave the stream. If you're not a Muslim, you need to have your camera on. Uh, seeing you as if you're in the sauna is not going to be enough 
of an identification to allow you on. Uh, that applies to you as well, L. If you are a non-Muslim, you're welcome, but you need to have your camera on. We can't get you onto the stream unless you identify yourself. You can switch your cameras off um, before you come onto the stream if you wish, if you desire, but you do need to have them on backstage. Uh, Ijaz, how are you anyway? And uh, so you you haven't seen the... Uh, the, the... Oh, the other thing I was going to say, Hamza, is that I find it very odd that... She was allowed to get away with all the comments that she got away with because Mamad Hijab simply wasn't aware of what she was saying because it wasn't a debate or a discussion. It was. It seemed like two separate interviews that were somehow just joined together. Um, and she was asking questions to Ayan Hibsi and asking questions to Mamad Hijab. I, I reckon had there been a, a discussion between the two, uh, the, the, the fact that even then Ayan Hibsi had a car crash uh, I think it would have been a, a complete and utter total destruction of her arguments had Hijab been able to directly uh, interlock with her in, in a discussion. So I found that very odd. And I, and I think that to some extent, I, I suspect that that's probably what Ayan Hirsi was comfortable in doing. Uh, I don't think she wanted to have that uh, direct uh, debate or discussion with Hijab because I think he would have literally... Uh, ran circles around uh, the nonsense that she was saying, but it was it, nevertheless it was interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. I think though, if it, if they were in the same room, it would have looked like bullying. Well, it doesn't have to. Be, I don't think it has to be in the same room, right? I mean, we're on a stream here uh, in yeah, different yeah. locations, you know, in the world or in, in the city or whatever, and yet we can still be having a conversation, right? Uh, a discussion on, on things. Mm. Uh, so, guys, just a quick reminder: this stream is for non-Muslims. Uh, unfortunately, the doctor's not going to join us. Dr. Imran's not going to be able to join us today. He's uh, tied up potentially in the next few days, few weeks uh, with work and things. So, may Allah bless him and eat us. May Allah make it easy for him, inshallah. Um, but, yeah, so if you want to come on, as I say, it's for non-Muslims. Uh, you need to have your camera on in the backstage, and then we can get you on. And then uh, you can obviously switch your camera off if you don't want to be uh, identified while you're on the stream. Um so, Jaz, I suppose we'll have to wait for you to really to watch the uh, to watch the I suppose not a debate but really interview or, or questions that were asked, and then we can perhaps follow up on that. Uh, what have you been up to this week, Jaz, in terms of uh, your channel and stuff? Have you put any new stuff out there? Or yeah, alhamdulillah, I got a video debate out with a student at Reformed Bible College. He's a seminarian. We discussed who wrote the Gospels. Obviously, he is a person that believed in the Church Fathers. 22 minutes long, it's up on my channel, couple thousand views, alhamdulillah. But, I mean, with almost all Christians I've spoken to, whether educated or un uneducated, it just seems like they've given up on, like, tradition and history, and it's all about what makes them feel good. Mm. And it's good to see Christians concede the point. We have no primary evidence for mm. anything that we believe. Mm. And that's mm. remarkable. You know, mm. I remember, you know, last couple of years before we started, you know, this line of argument, Muslims would presuppose the Bible's authority. They would let, they would let Christians quote the Bible for them. I'm sorry, that's not the way it works anymore. And Christians find it uncomfortable with this new style of engagement, but that's okay. Mm. But, you know, every new chapter, there were new opportunities and new possibilities. Mm. And now we've seen what the substance of the faith really is. Mm. And while I have respect and love for my Christian brothers and sisters, the digger we deep, the less we find. And the less we find is not good for the Christian faith, I think, mm. historically. And, and I, think, I think the thing is, the interesting thing, Ijaz, is actually, you're, you're quite right, that it's got to the stage now where when we talk to our Christian friends, and we say, look, uh, these there are fundamental issues and problems here of authenticity, of uh, of of, of uh, you know um, attaching certain texts to the lips of of Jesus or the, or, or the words, uh, the speech of God Almighty. And actually, I mean, many of them are now conceding to the fact that yeah, okay, that's fine, that's true. We we, we perhaps we don't know, perhaps they were uh, authors, but uh, anonymous authors or whatever. But and and they they have to then concede that their belief, therefore, is not anchored with a uh, logical reason necessarily. But as you said, it's more Emotion. to do it, what more to do with feelings, and emo I believe it's true, 
and it's super, uh, super. Uh, it's uh, predisposed, as it were, the argument that presupposed. This, yeah. Sorry, presupposed. That's right. The argument that this is in fact from God Almighty, and that however it's been preserved, that's how God apparently intended to preserve it. But somehow, well, I should, I should well, be following this, this. This problem has manifested, you know, it, its way into an even bigger conflict today. Uh, I don't know if I can mention the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, yeah. but a lot of people are unaware that the Ukrainian people used to be part of the author, the Russian Orthodox Church. They were mm. one church. And mm. because of political differences, the Ukrainian Orthodox believers in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, they separated from the Russian church. So, so this week, this took on a religious aspect to it. And mm. you would find many videos on TikTok and on Twitter of Ukrainian Orthodox priests blessing the tanks and the weapons. And the same thing on the side. People seem to be unaware that there is a significant religious aspect to mm. this conflict. And mm. the Orthodox Church is suffering because of this. I, mm. I don't see Christians crying out for peace over this, for the reunion of the, the, the Russian patriarchate and Ukrainian patriarchate. Mm. Where mm. is their cry for justice and peace? Mm. The churches seem to be happy to, 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 to spread violence and angst towards each other when I think it should be playing a role of reconciliation here. Mm. And I just don't see Christians enthusiastic about it. Unless it's ISIS, you know, attacking Christians... Christian lives don't seem to matter unless it's Muslims doing the aggressive act, quote mm, unquote Muslims. Mm. You have uh, you have Christians fighting each other. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's crazy out there. To be honest mm, with you, mm. do you know, what I find really shocking about it all about mm. what do you feel? Ukraine, Russia, yeah. is oh, this is in Europe. This is in Europe, and it's like this is Europe's history. It's all they do is fight each other. It's all we do. The Hundred Years' War, um, the World War One, World War Two. This is what Europeans do. You know, the, the idea that this is some unique thing that this has never happened before. It's, it's mad. It's, it's, coll it's like collective amnesia almost. <laughs> no, but also, uh, Hamza, what's, what's interesting is that if they're not fighting each other, then, uh, you know, we Europeans are bombing somebody somewhere, right? Or Americans. Are either, either either bomb and you know the, the, the interesting thing here is this you know we hear about this extremism and you know uh th this saying was being uh f you know flaunted and it was being sort of spread uh, very regularly uh on radio and all not all muslims are terrorists but all terrorists are muslims you know mm -hmm. of course when you start digging and you realize that it's factually incorrect and that there are significant portions of uh, uh, other societies that are non-Muslim, some that are Christian, for example, um, uh, or in for like, Sri Lanka or wherever it might be, where there were suicide bombings, where there were uh, terrorist actions that were done that were clearly uh, uh, non-Muslim, right? And yet, there's, like you said, there's this amnesia. They don't want to know about that. They don't want to talk about that. You know, can you imagine? I mean, in the Gulf War, in the Gulf War, the Americans wow. were singing war hymns collective gatherings war hymns by the priest by the um uh you know the uh person who was there uh you know the, the pastor or whatever before they were going into battle now can you imagine if they showed muslims singing uh, uh, war songs or something going into battle with christians what what they would have how they would have portrayed that and did you know, Ijaz, that they were writing, and you can go on Google, and you can Google this, by the way. This is not. This is definitely not a lie. They were writing verses of the Bible on the bombs, and they were putting crucifixes on the bombs that they were throwing on the Iraqis. Yeah? So you can imagine now, if that was, if that was Muslims doing that, and they would say, look, it's a religious war, and it, Blair, Bush, they all cited religion in their, in their speeches. Certainly Bush did several times, right? Uh, but they would have totally taken that out of context. They would have made this some sort of a religious thing. But obviously, if you're if you're if you're not Muslim, then of course it's nothing to do with religion. Uh, it's it's something completely outside of religion. So I do find that there's a lot of hypocrisy. Uh, there's a lot of hypocrisy uh, in terms of how things are portrayed, how things are shown, uh, how things are judged. For example, you know, uh, you're also yeah. making me laugh. Okay. Was, I mean, not laughing at the situation, just the, the double standard is, oh, 
they're doing war crimes. They've committed war crimes. They're, what are you talking about? They're, look what is going on in Israel. Look what, when when they inter- attack Gaza and the cluster, uh, the phosphorus bombs they're using. Look at when the uh, Britain invaded Iraq uh, and the killing of civilians. Was it shock and awe? They called it indiscriminate killing. Is what they mean. Mm. Yeah, they've been shocked the world. Look how we don't care who's who we're killing. Yeah, and then ten years of sanctions. The moral police yeah. to say to Putin, yeah. "You're a bad man. You're a bad man, sir." Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah, and they're saying, "Oh, they could be called in front of the Hague and this that." Oh, why wasn't Blair brought in front of the Hague? Mm. Just the double standards is mm. exactly just nothing. Exactly. Should um, bring this geezer uh, on, Joseph Victor. Well, he needs to put his camera on, Joseph. You need to put your camera on so we can identify. Come you. on, Joseph. And if you put your camera, on, you put your camera on, we can identify you. So you, can, you can switch your camera off once you're on, but you do need to put it on and um, identify yourself before you are allowed on the stream. Um, oh, so he's disappeared. So clearly that's not good for him. Huh. So, uh, guys. Mean, uh, I don't do that. You know that. I just bring them on. Well. I, I just over my hand over the remove button. Oh, yeah, well, I, we, we had a couple of issues with that, haven't we, in the past? Uh, <laughs> So anyway, so it's just one of the things that I wanted to say to you is that um, uh, how do you because I mean, the thing is, obviously, the, the, the bulk of our discussions generally tend to revolve around our Christian friends. And we have a little bit of discussion generally with atheists and probably less even with Sikh, Hindu uh, and Jewish uh, friends that probably very little, in fact, mm-hmm. uh, but with, with Christians predominantly. So that's why I suppose that. You know, we, we tend to talk about that uh, perhaps more than anything else. And I think the other reason perhaps that we do talk about it is that there, there, there is this difference of opinion between Christianity and with Islam. And they are both uh, proselytizing you know, religions. They, they both uh, are out there to get converts and they're out to tell one another that, look, what you're doing is wrong. Salvation actually is attained doing this or, or, or doing that. So I suppose that's a, a reason that we, we do perhaps discuss this quite often. But how do you reason somebody outside of something that they haven't been reasoned into because the thing is for me as a muslim i would say in my early teens late teens sorry, early... Sorry, sorry to interrupt your you know, just no, go on. comment just with that comment out <laughs> what is that because russia is attacking ukraine i'm thinking of leaving islam Yeah, what I mean, is that absolute nonsense? E- e- either Islam well, is... Well, Hamza, I, I hit my, my toe on the table yesterday, so he might leave Islam because of that too. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I don't what know. the hell is that? No, so is that it's, it's just my question to you is that how do you then tackle a discussion with somebody if they haven't been reasoned into a position? How mm-hmm. do you reason them out of something? Because you can't. Then it's an emotional argument or it's going to be something else. Mm-hmm. So what angle you, you, what angle you, you can you, you you just have to let people know that it's okay to think i often ask them if i go back to the first christian the first christian or the first believer of your faith they didn't just wake up and accept it they asked questions they were they were thinking about it they had to experience something they had to read something they had to speak with people that's what normal people do God didn't give us eyes to not see, ears to not hear, and mouths not to speak. He gave us these tools so that we can come closer to him. And I often think, like I tell them, go back to the first person. What would they do? Would they close their eyes and accept anything? How would you feel, for example, if you were a Muslim, and I I walked up to you with a Bhagavad Gita, and I said, believe in it. Would you simply accept it? No. If you're a Christian and I handed you the Quran, would you blindly accept it? No. You would ask, what is this book? What does it teach? Who does it come from? Why does it say these things? It's simple questions. So people have to become comfortable with thinking. And a lot of people aren't. It's a scary thought to think. If you think about it, a lot of people are happy living in this bubble where, yeah, my religion is sorted and I'm good to go. And then they just carry on with their lives. But God created you, and you have to think or contemplate about your own existence. And if you don't think about your own existence, if you don't have periods of introspection, then, to be honest, you're living your life on rails. You're not actually experiencing it. You're experiencing it as other people want you to. 
Mm. And so I rather put my life in my own hands and ask, who is God and what does he want from me? Those are mm. the two fundamental questions every adult will eventually ask themselves. So yeah. you have to get there with comfortable in thinking. And the thing is, the, I tell them, if you feel guilty in asking questions about your faith, then your faith isn't as secure as you think it is. I, as a Muslim, I ask questions about my faith every single day because if you do not ask questions, you cannot get answers. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam taught us to seek out knowledge. Seek it out. There is even a dua in the Quran, Rabbi Zidni Alma. It just uh, blanked out for a second. I do apologize. Yeah, There's a, a dua in the Quran, Rabbi Zidni Alma, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. So as a Muslim, you're forever seeking more knowledge. Knowledge cannot harm your faith unless your faith is shaky to begin with. That's just it. Yeah, and people absolutely. will eventually realize that. Just, just Unitarian Christian, you're always in the chat. Come on to the perfect storm, man. Tell us all about Unitarian Christianity and why you believe it's the truth. Why are those Trinitarians wrong? This is the perfect storm ready for you. Don't hide in the chat, bro. Sniping Putin. And I think the thing is that you know we can we can recognise that Putin uh, bombing uh, Ukraine or whatever is wrong. We can recognise that innocent lives are being lost, and we would say that that was wrong. It was not no, right. No, I wouldn't say that. No, but what I'm saying, say well, what I'm no, but what I'm saying, Ijaz, is I, I was speaking to I was speaking to a Russian lady a couple of days ago, and uh, she said to me, Abbas. and I, in fact, I said Abbas. to her, Abbas. I, yeah. I tell these people that tell me, Ijaz, you should feel for the Ukrainians. You should feel for the innocent Russians. I say, I feel for them both, but where the hell were you feeling 10 years ago or 20 years ago when our countries were being indiscriminately bombed? Right? No, but that's, that, you can't that's, expect me to have feelings now. Yeah. No, no, that's... I don't press that, a button. No, but that doesn't, change, you know? that doesn't change the fact that, of course, um, um, we would not uh, attribute... Uh, we would not lessen our mercy and our... No, we, we uh, love them and we want them right. to be safe. But yes. don't have me put on this pretension of changing all my social media, you know, icons to, to right. Ukrainian well, flag well, well, or the Russian well, that, flag. Well, that is different. Sud that, that... off, sud off with that BS and be yeah. a human and think. Condemn all violence or, endu or endorse all of it. Don't be, you know, this was this thing uh, yeah, I mean, biased, I, I think the, to be honest. I, I, I think the point is that if you feel, um, if you feel uh, sad and upset because they're a blonde-eyed, uh, blue-haired, a uh, blonde, sorry, blonde-haired, blue-dark, blue-eyed individuals who are going through these trials and tribulations, and yet you feel nothing when it's uh, when it's other people at, at our own hands who are suffering sometimes. Uh, then, yeah, that is, I think, hypocritical. But one of the things that I wanted to say is that a lot of people don't realize that actually, um, when Germany, um, uh, East Germany and West Germany, uh, when the wall fell. Russia mm -hmm. actually warned NATO, and at that time, I think it was Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan, if I'm not mistaken, that they basically, they basically allowed it to happen. They didn't send their army in and enforce the wall has to stay, et cetera, et cetera. But they warned that NATO does not go uh, uh, even an inch or two inches further east towards Russia. So basically what they said... Strap, even if a bootstrap... In yeah. So basically what they were saying is we don't want your armies and your missiles on our doorstep surrounding us. That's mm -hmm. basically what they were saying, right? Since then, I think at least four or five countries bordering Russia have joined NATO and American troops and bases are on, on literally on the border, okay? Ukraine wanted to do exactly the same thing, become a member of NATO and literally have... Uh, armaments and bases in effect that would be bordering Russia. Now, the question that I want to ask here is this. Would the Americans tolerate the Russians setting up bases in Cuba and Cuba in Mexico? Cuba missile crisis. No, well, they didn't, did they? No. they didn't. Exactly. No. Exactly my point, right? That the Americans but, but, didn't. But, but right? even if that was not the point, like, like even if we put, you know, because um, Russia does have countries bordering it that are part of NATO, right? Even if they did feel threatened, right? This is a war of conquest. It's not a war of necessity. And to be honest with you, Ukraine is actually quite well armed and they've put up a fairly good resistance. What people don't realize is that Russia has not used its 
firepower to destabilize the country. They've actually kept the communications and infrastructure still up there because they actually want the country to function. They're seeking a war of conquest, not a war of destruction, like what happened with Iraq. Shock and awe was the destroy factories yeah. and dams and yeah. farms and these types of places to destabilize the country. Russia is mm. sending people in five jeeps and five vans to get massacred down corridors in wide open streets. It's like functionally stupid. But the point is, they've actually been merciful to the Ukrainians and the Americans and NATO know this. That's why, like, think about this. You have countries like Germany and you guys, the UK, publicly announcing, hey, we're going to send a couple of stingers and a couple of weapons here for these guys. You don't do that openly unless you know that the opponent is not going to retaliate. This is all war theater. I can't give a damn about it. They're going to kill each other. One is going to win. There's going to be a bunch of sanctions and tomorrow goes on. I just care about the humans behind it. Just because, you know, people want to put on suits and kill each other does not mean that we should join them. No. I don't have any happiness seeing a Ukrainian cry, seeing a Russian suffer because now their money is worth nothing. How does that benefit me as a well, Muslim? We know you're a Chelsea business? fan, so we know where you're, but we know what's like your bread butter. You know, there's actually a TTC station, Toronto Transit Company. There's a TTC station called Greenwood Station. Every time I pass it, I keep thinking about you, Hamza, so much, you know. But the, the thing is, Hamza, at least my own, Alhamdulillah, our brother Roman Abramovich allowed us to win everything in football alhamdulillah the greatest club the century has ever seen alhamdulillah was there a game um, recently wasn't there with Chelsea and uh, was it Liverpool or something was it I, I don't know what Liverpool is brother You, might want yeah to and um, I think there was uh, quite a lot of goals I think at the end there wasn't there I think um, Chelsea uh-huh. just I think it was the goalkeeper apparently who missed or something. anyway well, that's a different story brother we won so much trophies we have no more room for them in our trophy cabinet anymore oh, I see if you want to so wanna... deliberate yeah, perhaps yeah, 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 yeah deliberate yeah. yes yes uh, Joseph our, Victor, our, our, our core manager our just, core just manager, a quick response yeah. sorry to earlier what Patrick said he yeah, said yeah, go on. Putin's going to be sorry when he's being judged by Jesus yeah well mm. in, in your idiotic belief you believe that Jesus died for his sins because he's a Christian so what are you talking about <laughs> how, I mean, how, how does that make to, Putin how does that make punished. any sense Putin doesn't get punished Jesus died uh, so Patrick I'm not surprised Jesus you're did. hiding in the comment section and you don't come on as you say nonsense man uh, guys look there's at least four people now in the backstage just uh, bring Jim Mar on or whatever his name n- is none of you have got your cameras on and Joseph, you you got your ca- you had your camera on, but it was like you were in the darkest possible room one could imagine. Uh, if you if you can, just put the light on. Identify yourself. There he is. We, there he is. There we go. When we get you on, Joseph, you can switch your how, camera. How much off. do you want, mate? <laughs> Where's my wallet? I, so I, I'm a bit confused <laughs> by by adult people not realizing we are drinking with our right hands. The cameras are reversed. Thank you for for coming in the back chat to inform me. I need to drink with my right hand, as if I've lived twenty years of my life without knowing the simple sunnah, and I go on a live stream and I drink with the wrong. So that's the right hand. I think that is it? my left hand, actually. Yeah, that's that's your left hand, right? So this is your right hand. So I think you just... Bring Joseph on. Come on, Joseph. Joseph, anyway. let's make war, man. Uh, okay, jo- Joseph, we're going to bring you on. You can leave your camera on or you can switch it off, whatever you prefer. Uh, hi, Joseph. Welcome to the stream. Okay, good evening. Evening, Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've just been thrown in the back right, of a van right. and I've just had the hood taken off my head. Are you safe, Joseph? Blink twice. Yeah. You can get help. Have you been taken? Uh, there's no, uh, there's no lights here. So, you know, we are having a oh, challenge of lights in Nigeria. Not, not, not a problem. Not a problem. So that is why you could see my face now. I'm using touch light. No problem. No problem, Joseph. That's fine. Uh, Are you clothed, Joseph? <laughs> Welcome to guys, guys, just, just guys, just hang in there. Uh, Joseph, what, what's your what's your question, Joseph? Um, I just uh, my question is all about uh, first and foremost concerning the issue of uh, Russia and Ukraine. Are you with me? Yes, we can hear you, Joseph. Okay, so. This man, this Putin, I don't know what is the, what does this man want? Uh, Joseph, we're actually losing you. Your internet is I don't know what not, he wants. 
Your internet is not actually working properly. Beginning. We can't actually hear you properly. So that's the it? first question. Then the, yeah. the second question is, uh, because I grew up among the Muslim. And when I was growing up then, uh, hello? Yeah, J Joseph, if you turn your camera off, you might get a better, uh, a better reception because your camera is probably draining a lot of the internet's uh, um, uh, bandwidth. So it might be okay. better if you just switch the camera off. We might be able to hear you better. Thank you. Okay. Is that is that a little bit better, okay. Joseph? Uh -huh. It's okay like this, right? This is this is probably a lot better, yes. So, jo okay, Joseph, okay. basically this stream is called The Perfect Storm. And what you're here to do is tell us what you believe. And then okay. we normally um, uh, have a conversation about that. So can I ask okay. you, are you uh, what religion are you, Joseph? I'm a Christian, a follower okay. of Christ by the Greek God. Okay. And, and can I ask you where you're from, Joseph? I'm from Nigeria. Oh, from Nigeria. So thank you very much for um, reaching out to us uh, all the way from Nigeria. Um, can, can I ask you... Um, Joseph, what is it that uh, convinces you that Christianity is actually true and that you should follow uh, the, the Bible and follow Christianity? What, what makes you feel that, uh, Joseph? Okay, first and foremost, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Christianity does not convince me. What okay. convinces me is Christ himself, because that Christianity is just a title. Right to me, it's a tight thing, and uh, so anybody can claim that he's practicing Christianity. So, what convinces me most the lifestyle of Christ, right? His message, okay. and what all the prophets had said about him, mm -hmm. and what he said by himself. So, all these things. Convincing. Sure. sure. So, so Joseph, um, the information about Christ and what mm. he said and what he did, mm. where would you go to to find out uh, about that? Where would you get that information from? First and foremost, uh, you know, sorry, Joseph, we've lost you again, I think. Are you there, Joseph? Yeah, I think we're going to really st struggle. Oh, he's come back on on another. Uh, let's have a think here. Yeah. I'm back. Uh, yes, yes, Joseph, you're back. Okay. So, uh, yes, yeah, so Joseph, where do you get um, the information of where what Jesus said, what he did about his lifestyle that you find so impressive? Uh, where do okay. you get that information from? First and foremost, the only place where we can find that information is uh, in the Bible. Matthew, right. Luke, John, Mark. And we also have some uh, some other books that are not added to the Bible. I can even get the story from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and Joseph, does it matter whether the Bible is accurate and preserved or does it matter for example if there are fabrications or changes that are done in the bible D does that actually matter to you in terms of finding out whether jesus actually said or did those things uh well as far as i'm concerned um it does not matter to me because i believe bible itself was written by man so not written so it is possible for us to have some kind of uh, typographical errors, causing confusion, because most of the things there, people might not really understand it. But if mm -hmm. I some concern, please, the little word, or little words that I've gotten from there is enough for me to believe that. Popular verse in the Bible, I think John chapter 20, Verse, um, I don't know, it says, This 
all these things were written for us to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I've forgotten the verse here. So it means uh, we have some um, people after the era of Jesus Christ you know, came, up, came together, put all these things to show that, yes, Jesus truly came to this world. He died, he resurrected, he ascended to heaven. Okay, so Joseph, I'll let one of the team members to, to join whether Hamza or Ijaz. So basically what your position, if, if I remember rightly as you've said it, and I hope I have, don't misrepresent you, is that whatever changes there are, are very small perhaps and insignificant, and that somehow you still have the, the body of the uh, of the uh, religion in in written form in the Bible, and therefore you feel that it's still a good form of guidance and a good form of knowing what God and what Jesus said. Is that right? Is that right, Joseph? Yes, as far as I'm con concerned, okay. is right. Okay, because, so uh, I'll 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 um I'll open the floor. Hamza, do you want to come in, and then inshallah we'll get Brother Ijaz in as well. Yeah, Joseph. Um, how do you know what Jesus said? You read Bible. I read no. Bible. Why, why, why do you believe what the Bible says? Sorry? Why do you believe what the Bible says? Ah, uh, because um, the reason is because God is true. God's true. The Bible says something in the book of um, Hebrew. It said, it is impossible, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And there is no any religion that does not have a uh, book. Why, why do you believe what's written in the book of Hebrews? Sorry? Why do you believe what's written in the book of why Hebrews? Why do I believe what is written in Hebrew? Yeah, why do you believe that's true? Is that the question? Yes. Hello? Yes, that's the question. Hello? What? Can you hear me? That's the question. Yeah. No, I think he's struggling with it with the internet. Um, are you with us, Joseph? Yes, I'm with you. It is, it is, it is network and problem. Yeah, I think we're having a problem with the network, really. But uh, go on, Hamza. Let's let's try. See if you. Why can do you help believe me. what's written in the book of Hebrews? Uh, the only thing that makes me to believe is just uh, God is real. How does God being real make the book when of Hebrews? When God true? called them. When God no, called Abraham. Why do you believe in God? When God called, stop, stop, stop. When why God, do you believe in God? The, uh, that's faith. Faith. Faith, 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 faith. Joseph. Yes? Huh? Why do you believe in why do you believe in God? What makes me to believe in God is the faith in me. Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to place God. Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. faith. What what gives you that faith? Yeah. It's God himself that gives faith. We have some people who don't believe that God exists. Why, why, so why are you not a Muslim then? Why are you not a Muslim? And where, uh, I believe um, the, only, the only thing that will make one to get to heaven is to follow Jesus Christ. And why the will of God, listen, the will of because you're asking me and I'm trying to answer you. Because the, Jesus said in the Bible, he said, the will of the Father is to believe the Son. So it Did means. Jesus say, what? Stop, 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 stop. Do you believe Jesus is God? Did Jesus say, did, did Jesus say he's God? If he said, yes, I believe. You believe he is God? Did, yes, of course. I believe. But you According believe the Bible. What was, so when According the Bible to, says. Victor, Victor. Wait, 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 I'm coming. According to what he said, because he said he's God, he said he's a man, he said he's son of God, he said he's king, he's priest. Where, so where did he say he's God? Where does he say he's God? I, that that is the the issue of I normally have with problem asking me where did uh, Jesus say his God is God? Well, you just uh, say said it. You just said he said um, he was God. Where does he say uh, that? He, he said he's God in book of uh, John chapter ten verse thirty three. Also the book of what did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Ten thirty. I know he didn't say he was God. You're welcome. That's the one I and the Father are one. That's the that. Yeah, how's that? No, how's no, that? That's no, no. A... I said verse 33, not verse 30. Verse 33. Yes. 
read it for us. Actually, why am I even entertaining this, to be honest? I these don't know why we're bothering. Yeah, these He's already are, talking have, nonsense. Yeah, Joseph, you, you huh? misunderstand, brother. These words are not authoritative from, for us. How do you know that Jesus said these words? Uh, I, let me tell you one thing. There are some, there are some questions that when you begin to ask yourself, that how do I know that Jesus and Jesus said this? For example, let me tell you, you were born to this world. When you came to this world, you met uh, your faith and then the Quran. So if I ask you, how do you believe that what is written in the Quran is true? How do you know? You tell me because that you know because we Joseph. have hold on. I'll answer. I'll answer it because I looked at the tradition and the historical evidence, and we examined the distribution of the literature itself and the stamma uh -huh. for the Quran itself. So we looked at uh -huh. manuscript evidence. We looked at statistical data. So I'm asking you, uh -huh. what did you ask yourself to show that these words come from Christ Jesus Himself? Uh -huh. When the earliest Christians claim that they made it up uh -huh. as they went along, as let original let says read, in the second let me just century. Read John ten thirty three. That this is this no, is the verse. Hamza, Hamza, don't enter. I don't want to enter. I have to. I have to. I have to now. No, I have to. No, let, let, let me just let me just finish this. Can one. I just read ten thirty three and then you can continue? Yes, if, if you don't mind. So, because in response to my okay, question okay. when I asked him, okay. "Where does Jesus say he was God?" He says, okay. "John ten thirty three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Joseph? Yes. 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 Oh, okay. And this is mm. what John ten thirty three says. Mm. The Jews answered him. For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man maketh thyself God. And then Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are gods. So mm -hmm. all you're quoting with 1033 is the accusation that was leveled against him. And in 34, Jesus refutes that accusation. That's that's so, a lie. You don't understand that. It's a lie. No, no, you don't understand it. You don't understand. You're reading into what you want to read. Jesus yeah, doesn't call himself Jesus, God. Uh, the Jews accuse him of the Jews accuse him of being God, and he refuses. But Hamza, them. Hamza, deep, Jesus tells deep, you, deep. don't believe what the Jews say. He calls them the children of Satan, that That's they lie like their father. Right. So Jesus is saying, is don't believe lie. the Jews because okay. they lie. And Joseph is saying, okay, forget okay. what Jesus said. I accept the Jewish accusation. So Joseph, why okay, do you okay, accept okay. the Jewish accusation and not what Jesus tells you? Jesus says in John chapter 8, verses 44 to 48, don't trust them. Mm. He tells you in Matthew 23, 37, they have killed mm. the prophets and they seek to kill me. So why are you trusting the, the statement of his accusers, the one he tells you yeah. they're the children of Satan? Why do you trust them more than me... Jesus? Mm -mm. It was what Jesus said that made them to utter that statement. Jesus said it. Okay, okay. And this is another verse. Okay, that place in it where Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Joseph, not least... that one. Joseph, you're going 10 chapters later, <laughs> Joseph. Focus here. Focus here. Does okay, Jesus okay. say trust the testimony of the Jews or does he say they're the children of Satan? Uh, okay. Did, did, uh, the, did they Jesus accuse tell... Jesus? Did they accuse trust. Jesus? They accuse Hello? them of being demo demonic, of being satanic, and of doing evil and wicked things. Well, do you also well, accept that accusation? So means, Jesus says, don't trust them, Jesus, so why do you trust them? It means Jesus, Jesus will have said, said that he is God before brother, accusing. Brother, Jesus said, don't huh? trust them. Do you agree Jesus said, don't trust your testimony? He said, they're the children of Satan. Why do you believe in the children of Satan, brother? And do, why do you uh, reject because Jesus? Because... No, I did, you are the one rejecting Jesus because your, mis, your you message reject, does not... Jesus cause, says, no, Jesus says, you, do you not trust the them, do not believe them, they lie like their father, what? Satan. Why are you telling us mm -hmm. to trust the children of Satan? You are the one rejecting the message, twisting it. I am telling you what is there now, but you are the one rejecting, twisting it, your own taste. Joseph, pause for a moment. Joseph, please answer the question. Did Jesus say, mm. do not believe them because they are the children of Satan? Did Jesus say that? Uh, yeah, Jesus said, don't believe just like your message that I should not believe your message. No, no, no. I'm referring to John no. chapter 8, verses 44 to 48. Yes, Read it for us. Yes. He said, do not believe them because they lie like their father, their father who is uh, Satan. So did uh, Jesus say that, Joseph? Because their father does not believe in the son. Uh -huh. Their father does not believe in the message that all the prophets preach concerning Joseph, Jesus. What was the reason? He said they lie like their father. He used a specific word. They uh, lie yeah. like their father. Yeah. So do not believe yes. them. 
Yes, because their father did not believe the message of all the prophets that they have preached concerning Jesus Joseph, in the book of hold Luke. On. Joseph, that's not what it says, and that's not what Jesus says. He says they lie like you, their father. Why are you okay. trusting their lies about him? Why are you trusting you know, their lies you, about you, him, Joseph? You think we are not getting each other clear. You you want me to get your message clear, and you you don't want to get my own. And I'm telling you that Jesus is was telling them that the messages of their father were lies simply because what their father was preaching then is not in line with what all the prophet had preached concerning Jesus. Joseph, Jesus commands them in Matthew chapter 10 to obey what the mm. Pharisees command you. You can't say it's lies that he's telling them to obey. Jesus commands you mm. to obey lies? Why would you say that? That is revolting. That. He says, for they oh, sit wait, in wait. the seat of Moses, so you must obey mm. them. So how can you call uh, all their tradition lies when Jesus sat uh, down and accepted them as his masters? What's going uh, there on? Are some, uh, let me tell you one thing. There are some messages that the, uh, what is it called? The Pharisees, that, that they don't believe about, about Jesus in the Bible. Why we have yeah. some that they Just believe. Second, and when you look, when you read the book of Luke chapter 24, I don't, I don't believe you have read that place before. Luke 24, he pass. Can I just speak 44. to him one second? Because you made a brilliant point that he ignored. And I want to put it in lights. Right. So just so we understand, Joseph, you said when 1033, the Jews are saying that Jesus is God, yeah? Uh, my friend, do you know what we are going to do? I don't want us to argue too much on this thing. Joseph, Joseph, if you have Joseph. A... Huh? This is your claim. Okay. So when Not I read to... Luke... Do you have a Joseph, Joseph. Huh? When I read Luke, um, Luke chapter 11, verse 15, the Jews are saying that Jesus is the uh, is using the prince of devils to um, cast out demons. So do you um, agree with the Jews that Jesus was possessed by, de possessed by the devil to yes. cast out demons? Because the Jew said it. Hello? Why do you keep saying hello when I ask you a flipping question? Okay. Okay. In mm. Luke chapter 11, verse 15, the Jews say mm. Jesus has Beez Beelzebub in him, and it's the mm. devils that are casting out devils. Do mm. you believe that? Um, do you believe do, the Jews do, do, really do, do, say that? Do you know the reason why they said that? No. Oh, so now there's a reason why they're saying it. Of course. So now, you're reason, for, so now you're not just going to read the text. Then, one second, Joseph. So just so I understand okay. now, when, when you read the verse in 1033, there's no reason for it. There's no explanation for it. There's, there's no response. There's no reason why they said one that. Second, there's no reason why they said it. Joseph. I'm just exposing your okay. double standard, mate. Yeah. No, you are so, the one. I'm exposing you because you're lying. I am you're exposing your double standard, mate. I'm the one exposing you now. You're lying. I'm the one Listen. exposing you because you don't you don't understand what you are interpreting. No, 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 no. Joseph, Joseph. You are the I'm one. Exposing I'm exposing you. you. I'm exposing you. Honestly, Joseph. you are. Joseph, you don't I'm understand what you're talking. If you don't mind, you are, because... free. you are free to move through. You are free. All right. Good. Okay. So here's the double standard. You read verse in 1033 where the Jews go to stone Jesus, accusing him of being God. Yeah. There's no explanation required. You don't look at the context. You don't look at the response of Jesus to this accusation. You just assume because the Jews said it, it's true. Yet when you read another part where the Jews also call him possessed by the devil and that he's casting out demons using the power of the devil. All of a sudden now we're making inquiry. All of a sudden now we do need to understand the context. All of a sudden now we do need to see the responses. And this is just double standard. Yeah. So if you want to uh, do that to the verse in Luke chapter 11, verse 15, you need to do the same to John uh, chapter 10, verse 33. You, you can't have your cake and eat it. Hello? Even though Boris says you can, you can't. Hello? Yeah, Joseph, I think you have a connection issue, Joseph. So I think what's happening is there seems to be a lag or delay in you, um, uh, you know, hearing us. 
Uh, I'll let you come back, Joseph, and I think then we'll probably end the conversation because I think it's a difficult to have it when when your sound's not working properly, and, and I think B, I think we're sort of uh, uh, sort of flogging a dead horse here. But go go ahead, Joseph, make your uh, make your point. Okay, and uh, first and foremost, uh, Amza does not understand the verse you just quoted. You don't understand it at all. That's why you tested me and you say you are you want to expose me. First and foremost, um, what Jesus said in that book of John, chapter 10, verse 3, what he said, it was what he said that gave the response to what the um, Jew said. Then the place where you have read now, because Jesus was performed signs and wonders, which has never taken place before. What he did is you know, somehow great and amazing and what has never taken place before. So when they saw that also, they also accused Jesus. The way they are accusing in the book of John chapter 10, verse 33, that's the same thing they are also accusing him here. So it is the same accusation. So it is the Amza that does not understand what he was quoting. Joseph, you're talking nonsense. Huh? You're talking nonsense. And to you, that is nonsense. It's not meaningful to you. But no, to no, me, it's nonsense. It's, it's, it's nonsense. I'll tell you, you are why. the one that is saying nonsense. What you are quoting is nonsense. I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, eh? the, Jew, the, the Jews... What? Because you are misquoting Bible. You, you are misquoting. Quoted, the verse eh? you quoted for you mm. is a verse that the Jews are qualifying Jesus to be God. It's a lie. Uh, yeah. Yeah, without, without looking... What did Jesus respond to when they said it? What was his response? Did he say, yeah, you're right? Okay, so if I take you to another place now, no, you, you... no. what was Jesus' response? Hey, he was trying to Jews you... accused, the Jews went to stone him, and he said, okay. "For what good works do you stone?" He said, "Ye are gods." What does that mean? Is Jesus agreeing with them, or is Jesus saying there's nothing special with this term you're using for me? Because you're the same. What, how do you understand it? What's Jesus saying to them? Are you saying Jesus lied? Mm. They're not they're not gods, or they are gods? Are the disciples gods? Oh, sorry, the Pharisees are they gods? Hello. Oh, sh oh I can't deal. I can't deal with that. I can't deal with that. Hamza, I think he's just having internet issues. Yeah, just get rid though, please. Come so, on. Uh, Joseph, my apologies, but I think because you're having so many internet issues, it's difficult to have a. Yeah. A conversation maybe next time when you have a better internet connection huh? we'll invite Isn't you back it? on again uh jo joseph just before you go if i might just ask yeah. you a quick question hopefully you get to hear it um okay. are, are all the that christian academics so uh, joseph are all of the christian academics and much much yeah. of the academia today on yeah. textual critic tra textual criticism of the bible mm. When mm. they say that these authors were anonymous, we don't know actually who these authors were, and that mm. actually there are lots of interpolation, lots of additions and subtractions uh, and fabrications mm. in the Bible. Uh, are you okay. saying that they are all wrong when they say this? Uh, let me tell you one thing. Whatever they say, it's not. I don't have a problem with that. Mm. I have found the truth, and the truth is... is Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody coming mm. to the Father except through him. And another thing is, Jesus said, the will of the Father is to believe the Son. At least that one is enough for me. And he also says something, that anybody that believes in me, even if he dies, is going to live again. So at least all these things is enough for me. So whether they are found in interpolation, contradiction, that's their own problem. And the thing is giving them a headache every day. You can see now. You see two pastors will be fighting together. So that's mm. this one is given. That is the work of devil. Where you begin to fight yourself because of so, the so, vast, vast so, so Joseph, the fundamental teachings that you accept, mm. um, how do you know that they are not also interpolations or fabrications? Why do you why do you assume? Why do you assume uh. that th those things that you hold on to 
are yeah. actually preserved and were indeed the word of God and the word of Jesus. Why do you assume It's that? not a matter of preserve. Let me tell you one thing. If you are practicing a, a particular religion and... Yeah, I think, sorry, we've lost you again, um, To defend your faith that, yes, this thing is real. Yeah, Joseph, sorry, I think we'll keep losing you, but we will invite you again. Thank you for coming on, Joseph. I don't need to. It's impossible. It's impossible to have a conversation with someone, one, who has a bad internet connection, and two, does not think. How can you trust this information? Where did you get your Quran from? Completely red herring. I answered the question as to how we can historically and scientifically demonstrate the truth of he just was just saying you can't have a conversation with somebody account. with bad connection. He just, you got bad connections. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> jo jo Joseph will have to ask you to come again. Thanks a lot. He just, you just said that you just said, how can you have a conversation with somebody with a bad connection? <laughs> and suddenly your picture went all fuzzy. And you're I don't know what's up with the connection. Like it works all the time, oh, except when I have to stream. Uh, it works okay, every <laughs> single time, except when I watch football or I do a stream. I don't oh, know. Oh, <laughs> subhanAllah, that was hilarious. That was hilarious. Okay, but I mean, I think that the point that I'm trying to make here, and I think we've, we've made this point so many times before, which is that the wide consensus of Christian scholarship is that we don't know who wrote the Bible. We don't know whether these were the words of God or the words of Jesus. We don't even know who wrote the Bible in terms of, you know, was it Matthew? Was it but, Luke? Was but, it but Habibi, Habibi that, that's irrelevant because Joseph doesn't ask himself that question. He says that it's faith. But mm. okay, anyone can justify any belief by saying I simply have faith. I'm mm. sorry, but my belief is not that uh, what was the word here, fragile, that I just have to go on the presumption of faith. I looked at it. I read about it. I critiqued it. I examined it. I mm. questioned it. I interrogated why I believed what I believed. And I'm happy with the answers that I found. Mm. I don't have to close my eyes and have blind belief. That's why I'm happy mm. to be Muslim, alhamdulillah. You know, Hamza or Abbas, does Islam tell you don't ask questions about Islam? Or does it tell you seek knowledge? Seek it. Just continue. And the thing is, Ijaz, I was having a conversation at Speaker's Corner on Sunday as well with a brother, Mashallah, who was very sincere, actually. Uh, I think his name was Alessandro, Alessandro. Um, and, um, and I explained the same thing to him, is that, you know, being born, especially in this country, where you are challenged, your beliefs are challenged, your religion is challenged, um, you know, where atheism, liberalism, uh, feminism, all of these things are pushed on you as if somehow these are the correct paradigms by which we should govern our lives. Uh, you you then do uh, have introspection and you do have investigation in your religion uh, because, you know, why should I follow my religion? Is there good reasons to follow my religion, to believe the Quran is from God, to believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God? Because if I, and I explained this to Alessandro, if I found gaping holes and massive problems within these concepts, I don't think I would have been able to reconcile them with myself rationally. I would not have been able to be intellectually satisfied to be able to even be here talking about Islam. Uh, and it's and it's only because of that journey, and, and I would imagine Hamza is the same for you and for many other brothers and sisters out there who've accepted Islam or are contemplating to accept Islam. It's not on on I this feels good, I like the way it is, and therefore I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Um, or because I like the culture, or I, or I like eating curry, whatever it might be. That's not gonna be the reason why you're gonna accept this now, okay. right? Not that most Muslims probably do eat curry, so that's a. Uh... But what I'm trying to say that's, to you is that's a bit racist. Uh, I know, sorry, but, I, but, 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 but I can be racist because I'm Asian, you see, and I. Oh, eat curry, I remember. So, you, so you, it's mean, okay, you, you know. Mean, you might not know this, but we we once went to get fish and chips with Hamza. I, I think it was Imran, myself, and Hashim. Hamza gets up from the table upset. He goes to the counter and he says, "Can I get some curry sauce, please?" He sits back down at the table and says, "Aren't you guys going to get your curry sauce?" We're like, we're Indian. We have curry every single day. So Hamza is the type of person that needs curry in his life, and I admire him for that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Much, absolutely. Uh, uh, just a quick reminder, guys. We've got four or five people in the backstage. You need to have your cameras on, number one. And number two, you can't be Muslim to get onto this stream. This is for non-Muslims. 
So we do have a few uh, names there that appear to be Muslim. Uh, guys, if you're Muslim, sorry, but this is not the stream for you. And if you are non-Muslim and you'd like to come on, uh, yeah, yo, active, active viral and uh, Hatini, uh, you, you need to have your cameras on uh, so we can identify you before we get you on. Isn't that the... Yahya rather than Yo-Yo? Uh, no, it says yayo, yeah, yayo, yeah, yo, or something. Oh, yayo, yeah, yayo, yeah, 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 yeah. You need glasses. Oh, another Muslim name. Yeah, 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 yeah. What did I say? Yayo, yayo, yayo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to have your your yeah, camera yo. on, guys, so we can identify you. And oh, whoever Joseph has their Victor, go, 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 please. Yeah, please, yeah sorry, please. Victor, we're not going to be able to get you on. You keep coming in the backstage, but we want we're not going to be because your your internet connection is not very good. Um, so I, I, I do find it really difficult. And I, and I think that a lot of Christians that I've spoken to who much love have come to Islam, they said because it makes sense. Because it was because it seemed that it made when you study it, when you ask the questions, when you look at the Quran, you look at the Hadith, you look at the, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his sayings and his life, that these things actually make sense. There's grounding, there's reasons to to, to believe it, to accept it. Um, and, and, and I think you have to be intellectually satisfied. And in Islam, we have this concept of aql and nakal. We have the concept of using your intellect to recognize the truth. And then certain aspects of the truth may become nakal. They just may be a, uh, a, a situation where you just believe because you've been told to believe that. For example, that angels exist. Uh, you know, we, we accept angels exist because we've we, we've using our akal, we've realized using our intellect that the Quran is, actually is from God, that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the prophet of Allah. And so whatever we're told then about angels or whatever else it might be about the unseen, we accept the reality of that. And that's the nakal. But we don't use nakal for everything. We don't use our blind following, let's say, for everything. Uh, the establishment of the, the faith itself the foundation of it, the acceptance of it. We, yes, we use our intellect. We have to. But I just find Christians are happy not to, quite frankly. That, sure, that's what I find. Sorry, Hamza? Active Viral had his camera on. Oh, did he? Okay, so we'll uh, get you on Active Viral. And um, uh, Active Viral, are you Muslim? Uh, you just need to unmute yourself, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm really sorry to be there and I'm a Muslim, but I message you. I mean, I uh, come to them. But I just want to ask you guys can, uh, can I ask questions once the non Muslims are done? I can go right now. It's fine. Brother, sorry. No, you know what really it is? We, we have to make that rule um, and, and we have to sort of in, in, enforce the rule. If we don't, then I know what will happen. Backstage will be completely full and blocked with all our Muslim brothers and sisters. Uh, that want to ask questions. It would, be, it would be great to talk to you, but unfortunately, this stream will just get completely hogged. Um, not that we've got hundreds of guests waiting to, to speak to us, but um, uh, Hatini and Khanboy, I'm presuming maybe one of you might be Muslim or both of you might be Muslim. If you are Muslim, then this is not the... Here, here's the deal. If they come on and they're Muslim, we block them. Ah, no, no, we won't, we won't do that. But guys, please no, be I'll block them. I'll, I'll be the bad one. I'll no, block no, we mustn't, we mustn't do that. I think well, we'll, Martini we'll just... or Hartini, I don't think that's a Muslim, I don't think. Yeah, Hartini, can you just put your cat? Well, he's disappeared or she's disappeared. Khan uh, is definitely a Muslim. Khan Boy, you appear to be possibly, potentially. Oh, mind you, he might not be. Uh, Khan Boy, can you put your camera on so we can identify you before we get you on? Because we do need to identify the guests before they come on. So, guys, we've had loads of guests that have showed up on the backstage. Um, but for some reason, a, a simple request of having the camera on doesn't seem to have got through. And most of the guests that came on uh, at the backstage, they don't have the camera on. And we can't get you on uh, if if you don't do that. You just can I, I mean, just ask you a question because, I mean, obviously, I'm still learning about Christianity. I, don't, I really don't know anywhere near as you or Hamza or, or even Dr. Imran, for example. But... The, the early Christians, the early followers of Jesus, do we have any records of what they believed? Was this a, were, no. was this the, was this a unanimous opinion that Jesus was God, that he died for our sins? 
from the very earliest Christians that were there, do we have any information, remnants of what they believed? Nothing. We have nothing from the first century CE. What we have are things decades after Jesus, peace be upon him, and that's unfortunate, you know. Um, we just don't have anything. Christians have to depend on what they call their tradition, but their tradition it's like centuries after it's not credible enough to establish anything uh, you know we like to think of christianity as this big faith that like spread very quickly and many people saw many miracles and they they had this belief christianity was a small cult in the roman empire no one cared about them legitimately no one cared and so they didn't seek to copy their documents they just believed that the world was about to end jesus would return before the apostles died and that would be the end of it so no one cared to write down anything no one cared to transmit anything it's just that as time went on the formalization of the beliefs and the church structure happened right that's why you have ecumenical councils centuries later the church fathers have to come together the leaders to debate core beliefs it's like a religion in development but with Islam, how many unification councils did we need to have? Mm. None. Mm. Big difference. Camboy has a Hindu name. Yeah, yeah, but we Cam need Boy. to have his camera 100%. I need his we camera on. We can take the on. chance. We no, can take the I chance. Need... No, no, no. Let's let's let let's do a vote. Let's do a vote. No, no, no voting here. Yeah. No, 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 no. There is no Two voting to one. here. Right, Abbas, Abbas, no, no. I have. Democracy listen, wins. I have. I have the. I have the veto here because I am. Uh, I'm, I'm managing the stream. Conboy has to have his camera on. We have to identify him. Otherwise, he's not coming on. That's that's the rule. I mean, I mean, Abbas, are you saying that democracy does not matter here? No, not when I'm the moderator. <laughs> I think Queen well, Elizabeth well, got a rival. Well, up when I'm here. the moderator, there's no, there's no, even if there's 10 of you, you have to still listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> and I'm also speaking to Anis in the back chat in the uh, message uh, Anis and, doesn't and, count because he's biased. He doesn't count. And, and, and this has made it. And this has made it very clear as well that he definitely needs to have his camera on. And so I think that's uh -huh. going to be the, that. That's going to be what I'm going to inshallah follow as well. So Khan boy, if you want to come on, because I think you have a Hindu Hindu name uh, as a YouTube uh, authenticated YouTube user, uh, and that's fine. We, we welcome you to the stream. Uh, but you definitely need your camera on and we need to identify you um, before you come on. If you're not prepared to do that, you might as well drop out the backstage because you're not going to be getting on the stream. Um, and I say that uh, respectfully, but uh, we have to uh, enforce some sort of, uh, uh, you know, sensible rule here. Uh, Amir Hamza, I presume you are Muslim. If you are Muslim, brother, this is not the stream for you. This is for non-Muslims only. Uh, the Muslim stream is the Dawa Clinic. Um, that you want to come on. So, brother, sorry, we're not going to get you on. Um, again, if you're non-Muslim, you're Christian, you're atheist, I mean, I'd like atheists to come on and tell us why we're crazy for believing in God. I love atheists. God. I love deists. You know, it would be nice atheists. to have uh, so love, atheists to come on and tell I us. Wiccans. I want to talk with them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sean, if you want to just put your um, camera on, we can get you on, and then you can obviously switch your camera off before you come live. Uh, on the stream but we do need to identify people so please if you can just put your camera on uh, and that means that i've got to see something different to a black screen i need to actually see your face if that's okay uh, but not a black screen not a not not a, a darkness so if you want to put your camera on and just identify yourself uh then we can get you on uh, otherwise gotta, we won't be able to i gotta give it to joseph for trying because my man had a flashlight on his face that that cracked me up i'll be honest with well, you well i think he did he mention that there was no he light didn't there. put the sean, light above him to like so you can see his face he put it in his yeah. eyes so you couldn't see yeah sean thank you for identifying yourself just touch your nose for me if you don't mind sean oh bring him on for the minute don't do the hokey cokey man just touch it lovely thank you sean i'm gonna get you on now you can switch your camera off if you like we're gonna get you on next hi sean welcome to the stream Hello. How, how are you doing, Sean? Thanks for having me on. Pleasure, Joel, uh, Sean. Uh, what, what would you like to say? Well, I'm a bit of a agnostic or probably more atheistic, but I, I'm interested in religion. Sure. So um, I was just thinking about all the bad news that's going on in the world right now. And oh. I understand why people are religious. Right. And... Uh, Islam is going through a lot of hard things as well. And uh, the Ukrainians, are they religious? I think a lot of them are Orthodox, is it? 
they are indeed they're christians that's right is it like majority orthodox or are they they used to be more atheists back in the day I, I, I think that there is a very strong Christian presence in 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 Russia and in, in and in Ukraine. Um, yeah. Whether people are practicing or church going, I couldn't really tell you. But I think it would be certainly more than pro- perhaps what we find in Europe, um, you know, in England, Ireland, or or in many other parts of Europe or America, uh, where Christianity perhaps. Um, it is dwindling and there's very few people that go to church but from my understanding um certainly the russians you know they are very christian they do um they do go to church they do it's a lot more let's say active than it is here but but Sean can i ask you you said you're agnostic well i'm mainly probably atheist to be fair well, but i'm just yeah. open minded like sure sure so so when you say that you're atheist um what what how, what do you believe in terms of what do you accept in terms of how for example the universe got here how, what 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 do you say about those sort of things i don't think he, scientists fully know that yet i don't think they probably will ever be able to sure it's like who who created god who created the big bang and who created god before him and all that stuff sure, these, sure. these questions are probably going to be very hard to they're trying to do it though with the big hydron collider there whatever the yeah. scientists are doing mad things can I ask you a question, Sean? But we're also dangerous too, though, scientists. They're, they're sure. accidentally destroying the planet unwillingly. Sure. Yes. Why would you ask who created God? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. Like, It's a good question to ask. Why? Why do you think it's a good question? Well, it's probably because like, nobody can really answer that. Why, why do well, you think that? It's probably that not. Is... It's hard... I mean, I don't think the religious people can answer that question. It's all, I mean, when you think How, about it, it's when you all. When you say God, what do you mean? Up. Okay, when you say God, I mean, what are you talking about? What's your, what's your understanding? I mean, let's say I was Christian and. No, 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 no. I'm I thought God was real. Let's see, you're, you're an atheist. When you say yeah. who created God, in your mind, when you say God, what are you imagining? What, what do I imagine? I imagine a spirit. It could be physical. You could imagine him as a man in the cloud or a spirit that is connected to everything, the oneness of the universe. Or you could say it's a goal. It's up there, invisible. Everything, everyone's God, like the Buddhists or some other religions. So there's loads of descriptions for God. But then the so atheists if I, if I think said that... to you, when I say God, so when I say God, yeah. I'm talking about the necessary being that is required for everything to exist and, and something necessary doesn't require an explanation. Say that again. Sorry, I wasn't listening properly. Sorry. Okay. When we say God, yes, we're referring to the necessary being that is required by default for everything to exist. Without the necessary being, contingent things can't exist. Contingent things require an explanation. Necessary things don't. Oh, so you're saying that you could you could explain, let's say, my explanation of like who creates everything. You could say that everything is God, so you won't need to say who who created God. Is that what you're basically saying? No, 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 no. I would say, if we're saying that the, when we say God, we're referring to the creator of everything, the source of everything that exists. Yeah. Right. So that source. It's necessary for things to exist, contingent things to exist, yeah? Right. Because conting- contingent things require an explanation. Sorry, I'm not very good with words. What does that mean, con- contingent? Contingent is just something, basically, that doesn't have to exist um, the way it is, uh, but it requires an explanation to why it exists or how it exists. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, so here's what you've got to think. You've got to, you've got to take your mind when when I say the word God, don't think of a guy with a beard sat on a cloud. Yeah, because yeah. that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is a creator of everything that exists, the whole universe exists because of this creator. The creator by default cannot be created 
the creator by default cannot have a beginning. Because once the creator has a beginning, it requires an explanation. It requires a cause. Do you understand? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. you're saying that so the God the question, was always so there. The question, so to ask the question, who created the creator is a moot question. It's an illogical question to ask when you understand the definition of the creator. Oh, so you're basically saying that there was no real beginning. There was no end. It was just always there. No, the creator cannot there. have a beginning by default. Well, you understand that in science, like there is the Big Bang. So there was a beginning no, no, in no, their theory. The, so you're saying... the universe. We're talking about the cause of the universe. We're talking about the originator of the universe. Yeah, we're not talking about creation. We're talking about creator. So when you ask the question... So do you understand now to ask somebody who believes in a creator who created the creator is an illogical question to ask somebody? Because the creator by default not really, can't be sorry. created. I'm sorry? No, not really, but I, I get it roughly, yes. Yeah. So you're basically saying... Well, let, let me lock it in that... for you. The creator doesn't have a creator because the creator doesn't have a beginning because the creator in the paradigm that we believe always exists yeah contingent things are temporal creator eternal you understand all right so are you saying that all are you saying that all these religions kind of believe in the same kind of god but in a different way no, no, this this is another question again. So once we have a creator, right. how do we find details about this creator? How do we know what the nature of this creator is, why he created and such and such? The only way we could possibly know is through revelation. Yeah? What it reveals about itself. Yeah. Yes. So you, so you would look for um, men of history who've claimed to have some kind of connection to this creator, who've received, re received this exact revelation as to the nature of the creator and test their claims to determine whether or not they're truthful, charlatans, or whatever it may be. But you do understand that there's a lot of people who lie out there who... Um, I used to be a Catholic, so I know... I used yeah. to be big into conspiracy theories and all that. There's a lot of fake news out there so it's kind of hard to be sure I on everything I, I i i am always skeptical of er even myself in my own views i you always have to be because there's always some thing that you never will find out the truth well, in. Well, sean sean you no disrespect but your views are baseless there's nothing supporting them yeah. You mean in so, uh, uh, the Big Bang and the scientific view of like we're not sure yet if there's a God they're still trying to find out they're not like like the atheists are probably never gonna well the atheists are probably sure they're probably not ninety percent hundred percent sure that there's no God but they're not like they probably haven't found the evidence yet anyway sure the idea that you need empirical evidence for something to be true cannot apply to God. I, I don't understand what that means, empirical evidence. I'm not very good. I'm not very smart. So the idea that you, you need to see something, test something, observe something, do you get me? For it to exist, for it to be true. Let me give you the let me give you the acid test just to test your logic if you don't mind, Sean. Everyone knows the answer in the chat. So shh. Before we discover Mount Everest, what was the highest mountain in the world? Uh it was probably a smaller one, yeah. It was a smaller one. Think about the so question. We did, uh, uh, Before we discover Mount one. Everest, what was the highest mountain in the world? It was um, the next one down, whatever it was. The one in, in Ireland. I forgot his name. Mount something. No, the answer is Mount Everest. The, what? Do it again. Do the question the answer again. Mount, the answer is Mount Everest. Just because we didn't have knowledge of it doesn't mean it wasn't the highest mountain in the world. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. You so you're saying that basically the atheists will be able to find out that God is real, and so God was always real, 
Therefore, yeah. Well, yeah. there's a funny thing happening, not necessarily with atheists, because the new atheists have got their own um, f- is it philosophical naturalism. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, if you look at the current latest scientific discoveries, yeah, of DNA, of quantum mechanics, and all of these things, they point to an intelligent agency behind everything. Yeah. This is this 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 is the uh, from our human experience when we discover information, we know a hu- information is the result of human uh, in- sorry sorry intelligent agency. Yeah. So the question that atheists or agnostics like yourself, Sean, is when you find DNA inside the cell, which is information, the question needs to be asked, why do you apply a double standard to this information that it doesn't need an intelligent agency and it's just random? Where we know nothing in our human experience of something being random to result in an information. Well, no, I think the scientists have a other explanation for that. I mean, I think they have the loads of theories out there you could look up. I mean, I, I watch a lot of debates between atheists and religious people, and they've all these mad words, scientific words that I don't uh, care about. At this point in time, I'm going to recommend something to you. Everybody knows what I'm going to do right now, but I'm going to do it anyway. Everyone can read me like a book, literally. Okay, you need to read this book. Can you see it? Return of the God. Hypothesis. Yeah. I'm reading this book on my channel, Hamza's Den, every Monday. Me and a brother called Yusuf Ponders. And um, you should tune in because you'll, you'll learn something. Um, and the thing is, you see, the things that you're believing to be true are just based upon people's testimony. And the question you need to ask yourself, Sean, is why do you believe these people know what they're talking about, for one, and what they're talking about is true? Because you haven't done no experiments. Well, you, You've done no experiments well, yourself. I, I like to listen to both yourself. sides, you see. I like to again. listen to both sides. I like to listen to both sides. So, you know, what the, with the war now in Iraq, I like to listen to the RT and Fox News and CNN, see what they're all... But it's hard. It, it, you have to be quite educated to find out the truth. Because some no, people... Yeah, but, but Sean, you need to ask yourself, why are you believing these... Like, like for example, I give you a beautiful question. Why, when you find information in DNA, do you apply a double standard to, to this information, whereas in your human experience, you don't know anything that results in... Uh, anything that results in... Um, information or coding is the result of intelligent agency that's your human experience you read a book you know it's not put itself together you know it's been organized by something intelligent when you see a computer program or a computer coding yeah you you know this has been put together yeah by so, so you your theory itself. is that a god created the no, beginning no, 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 no. of the big bang I'm not interested in talking about God at this point. I'm just asking you because you don't believe in God, so which is fine. But I'm just trying to understand when you come to this point, why why are you putting your fingers in your ears or assuming that science have an explanation? Scientists have an explanation when they don't. Well, I'm not sure. Like I'm 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 open minded. I mean, let's say the your, the type of God that is a real may be different to all these religious gods. So. The God could no. be explained in a different way. It could be something out there that scientists don't know, but it might the 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 creator might be totally different than the the most religions sure, know sure. about do, the do mystery that we don't know. Concepts of the absolute truth. Um, I I don't know. No, sorry. So the concept of the absolute truth is if you're presented with different realities which contradict each other. Well, they can't all be true. Yeah, fair enough. So, so you you could have a, a thousand religions, but if they all contradict one another, they, they're either all false, yeah, all false, or one or nine hundred ninety nine of them are false. Or atheism is correct scientifically. Well, that's why I said all false. Yeah. So the idea 
So, so you've got a thousand religions, all contradictory. So, first no, of all, they, they can't the all be Christian, true. No, but the, the Christians and the Muslims and the Jews, they all believe in one God. So they are no, all no, no. kind of yeah, true, though. Yeah, we get that. The, po the point is, what I'm saying to you is this. So let's imagine that we've got a thousand religions. We haven't got a thousand religions. Let's just say we had a thousand religions and then we've got atheism. So first we have to take atheism off the table, isn't it? Okay. So now we have to look at the probabilities of this universe causing itself, creating itself, organizing itself, single cells randomly mutating, being harnessed by natural selection and evolving into all sorts of creatures that became human beings. That's your... You believe you're right now, your position is your ancestor was Nemo right now. Yeah, true evolution. Yeah. Yeah. Like fish or something. Because you believe evolution That's is true. true. Yes. Why? Don't you? No, I don't believe my ancestor was Nemo. No. Why do you believe it's true? Well, I, it's over a long time. Like, I guess humans, I mean, Homo sapiens are our species. The Homo sapiens have been around, I heard. For 200, no, 300 million years. And then before that, there was Neanderthal. Then before, they found the skulls of our relatives, like, long ago. No, but your relative they, they was changed. a fish. Yeah, well, they haven't found the, 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 uh, the, the mutations of uh, the exact uh, evolution of the human species, but they're finding more and more evidence. But There's more evidence how of a evolution. single cell creates information. See, I said, I'm not a scientist. So I really can't answer it specifically. Well, this is the point. This is the point. You believe a scientist could answer that question? Well, yeah, an evolutionary biologist probably could, yeah. What's, that, what's their answer? Well, and why are you they satisfied? Would... You, don't even know, you don't even know their answer, yet you seem satisfied. Well, I see, I'm not an expert on everything. I like listening to a lot of different things. I'm not a... Um... I used to research a bit. I used to do horticulture, but they teach you about genetics and uh, plants. So there is uh, mutations going on all the time. You could change the, the the genetics of plants and all that and all that stuff. So it is who, happening who, all the time. Who can change Evolution. the genetics of plants? Humans. We can exactly. we can change plants. Yeah, so animals do that themselves naturally. Well, no, no, no. You've, no, no. Well, can the plant genetics change without the human intervention? Yes, it can. Yes, without humans doing it. But through the environment. So if the environment changes, they can change as well. Right. But you, you believe a single cell became everything. I'm just trying to understand why. Well, like let's say, oh, the, the simple explanation is like. There's the bacteria, and then from that it it multiplies into big, more and more bacteria, uh, more and more cells, and it turns into an animal, no, no, and then no. the animal turns Listen into. Listen to the question. Listen to the question. The cell, where does the information come from, so it knows what protein to build? Where does that information come from? The blueprints. Where is it from? Well, scientists haven't figured that out yet, but they have figured out other things but they are still they have theories for that like the, some theories say that it was hot water and then the minerals in the water turned into cells and then some so it, chemistry, I, I saw a chemistry, documentary about it. chemistry cannot turn into biology in that way I have Could I just I, interject? I, I, yeah, yeah, on, yeah, Sean, what you're thinking of is the primordial soup that there was heat with carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Please don't call it, that. call it magic custard. That's what it is. Yeah, but but I I ho hope you understand, Sean, that that doesn't tell you where consciousness and intelligent life comes from. That bacteria can exist does not mean that intelligent life is necessitated. Intelligent life had to develop. And if it had to develop, then consciousness had to come from somewhere. This is called the hard problem of consciousness because we can figure out the chemistry, but we can't get the, the biology behind it, the neuroscience behind it. It's two different things. So honestly, what I'm seeing is you have maybe some idea of what you believe in, but it seems to be bits and pieces that are a bit scattered and there's not much coherency to it. Maybe it's something that you believe and accept, but it's not something you've studied 
And we would encourage you to study it because Hamza is not asking you questions in a vacuum. He's asking you fundamental questions about the origination of life and the development of life. And I just feel as if like um, it's a bit of a mismatch what? because you're not understanding the questions being asked. Mm. Well, you can be still religious and believe in evolution. It's not, uh, I mean... I think most religious people believe in evolution. No, the Pope doesn't he believe in evolution. I think no, I no, but the, the, the difference is, you see, you you believe in Darwinian evolution. But I think I thought a lot of religious people believed in evolution, Darwinian evolution. No, no, we don't believe in Darwinian evolution that we evolved from fish. We don't believe that. What about the Christians and the Jews? Christians don't believe they evolved from fish either. What do you guys believe we evolved from fish? Well, long, long ago, like. For mouse or something, mammals. What? Mammals. Where, mammals. Where did the mammals come Where from? We... Where did they come from? Uh, they, they all came from the sea, anyway, water. So your water. ancestor was a fish? Yeah, bacteria and then fish and then mammals. Why do you keep saying bacteria? Like bacteria can just appear. Or single... Where did the bacteria come from? Well, okay. you could I mean... accept. Anyway, Sean, it's fine. It's evolution. Anyway, it's fine. Sean, Everybody if I can, evolution. Sean, if I can just come in there, um, uh, Sean, uh, would you agree that um, to do certain tasks, you may need certain tools to enable you to be able to accomplish that task? So, for example, if you want to dig a ditch, you need a spade, right? If you want to see the stars, well, you need a telescope, right? Would you Would you agree that you need the right tool for the job? Would you Would you agree to that? Yes. Okay. So now if we look at how science works, and as Muslims, we regard science as a blessing from God. It tells us much about how uh, things happen, how they work. It, it enables us to do wondrous things uh, such as drug development and all sorts of other things. But what we have to appreciate, Sean, is that the very toolbox that science operates with it doesn't have the tools to be able to talk about the metaphysical, i.e. the things that are unseen outside the realm of what we would be able to visually see and experience. So science operates on a, on, on a foundational axiom or a foundation which is philosophical naturalism. Now, now Sean, philosophical naturalism means Everything that we discover, it must have a naturalistic explanation. In other words, it can't be a miracle, it can't be God, it has to be something natural, even if we don't understand it at the moment or we can't prove it, but we would simply have to hold back until possibly the evidence for that may come in the future. So that's how science operates, Sean. So science can't tell you about God. It can't tell you, and it doesn't discuss, it doesn't, it's not concerned with discussing the concept of whether God exists or doesn't exist. So do you, do you appreciate that therefore you can't use science to try to answer that question? Do you, do you, do you sort of, do you see where I'm coming from? Well, no, I don't, I don't think so. Cause I think there's a lot, I heard that a lot of science, most scientists are atheists and there's a lot of scientists that try. I mean, that, that that large hydron collider there that's trying to find the God particle or something. In yes. Physics. So they are researching no, but, it. Do, do I, but I there is scientists is. that study. There is scientists yeah, that yeah, are studying. Sean, the no, 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 Sean, Sean, Sean. Sorry, sorry, sorry. About, sorry. Okay. Go on, go on. Do you, do you want to? I, I just no, no, go on, go on. What a God particle is. No, to be fair, I'm not an expert now, but they, they are ex researching about like the, the, the smallest bits they can find in an atom. So they're trying to break it apart to find what's inside. And they called it the God particle, but it's probably not the God particle. It's no, probably... no, no, but, yeah, but that's not science seeking out God. That's science seeking out an alternate to God. That's science trying to find a way that all this could have happened without a God. Yeah, but why did they call it God particle? It's just uh, because, triggered because for a them, religious... For them, that would be the thing that we would call God, the creator. They always say, we don't need that. This is this is the particle that does the job of God. 
Do you understand? So it's not see. It's not, it's not a. It's not a thing to try to investigate and discover where God is. Yeah. It's a way to determine how everything could have happened without the need of a God. That's right. So even though Sean, they've called it the God particle, it's not a search for God. Basically, do you, do you see? Do you see the point? It's actually like Hamza said. It's finding something that. Uh, can explain how everything got here without God. So it itself becomes the God particle. In other words, it becomes the the creative force, the creative thing within nature. So uh, that's what I'm trying to explain to you, Sean, that science is not concerned with God. It doesn't have the tools to even uh, find out whether God exists or God doesn't exist. And even things that may be a mystery that science doesn't understand or possibly in the future may never understand, it will never arrive at a conclusion that God must have done it. It will always say that there has to be some naturalistic explanation, but we just haven't discovered it yet. So this is why, Sean, I'm trying to explain to you that science is the wrong tool to try to uh, uh, evaluate uh, the existence of God existing or not existing. But, but Sean, if I can ask you sort of a, a basic question, really, which doesn't require a, a lot of science or knowledge of science, because these things are very intuitive and they are very rational. So if I said to you something exists, it could be anything. It could be a tennis ball, for example, right? And that tennis ball exists. Would you agree that there, there can only be a rational, a handful of rational reasons as to how the tennis ball might have got there? Would you accept that there can't be an infinite or an unlimited number of explanations, but there would only be a handful of reasonable explanations as to why the tennis ball exists? Would, would you accept that, Sean? Well, according to physics, there could be many theories, like the parallel universe thing, the like Elon Musk thinks that we're in a simulation or something, yeah. video game. Sean, or my, something my question to you, my question to you, Sean, is: whenever we look at something existing, we right. would we we would use our intellect, we would use our knowledge, we would use our understanding, and we would say. Somebody must have created that. Somebody must have made that. We would never assume, Sean, that it must have just popped up from nothing. Would Would you ever come to that conclusion, Sean? Well, yes, obviously someone made that ball. Right. But, yeah, so, so Sean, you're implying Sean, that God Sean, must have created everything. No, no, no. So, Sean, my question to you would be this then. If a tennis ball existing cannot exist simply out of a vacuum of nothingness, then how can we make the jump that this entire universe with more stars than grains of sand on every beach on earth could have somehow come into existence from nothing? Okay, so th this is the scientific people that I need to do, okay? So basically it popped out of nothing and then the universe just happened. But they still don't know what caused that bang to happen. So it could be God, it could be something else, it could be nothing, it could be a different parallel universe. Uh, it could be Sean. I'll I'll tell you the deceit that goes on with what you just said. Not from you. You just said something. It could be God, it could be this, it could be that, yeah. So there's a possibility okay. it could be God, yeah? Yes. Okay. Then why did they do all their science without God in the equation? Well, no, there is still scientists out there who believe in God. I mean, the, no, no, there, no. The, there, science there that goes on, the science that goes on by by these atheists is done. They, they they know they can't say God doesn't exist, yet they act like God doesn't exist. So they're affirming God doesn't exist because all of their equations, everything they're doing, all their their, their philosophical naturalism is saying God doesn't exist. So on one hand, they're saying God could exist, but we're going to take the position he doesn't. Do you understand how d disingenuous that is? Well, no, no. I think the, the physicists who studied uh, the Big Bang and all that stuff, 
they are probably thinking about God more than uh, the average scientist. I mean, um, you, when you think about all these theories, the quantum theory, all these mad mathematical things, you will probably Let me read something think about to you, Sean. God. Sean, I'm just going to read you just one review from my book. Sean, I've got a hypothesis. Hamza's Den Mondays. All right. Um, <laughs> Maya's yeah. book is a masterclass. It does irreparable damage to atheist rhetoric and shows the God hypothesis offers the best explanation of our finely tuned information rich universe. And that's a guy called John C. Walton, who is a research professor of chemistry at the University of St. Andrews. So th these are university prof professors who are admitting that the more science is discovering, finding quantum mechanics, string theory, all these kind of stuff, all it's doing is asking more questions as to how did this happen? And, th and that's what this book is doing. It's showing you that the latest, the latest scientific discoveries are all pointing to God. The science of physics, the science of chemistry, the science of biology. But the problem you've got is if you're using a tool, which is philosophical naturalism, you can never, ever, ever concede the existence of a creator. Of something supernatural. By well, no, you, no, no. I'd say uh, if I were a Christian scientist, I could just say, okay, there's a God, and He created the Big Bang and no. evolution. So you could uh, you can apply science of bio of Sean, all. You're not a Christian, science. mate. You're yeah, not. But let's say I were. You're not believing what were. Christian. You're not believing what Christian scientists are saying. You're believing yeah, what atheist but, scientists are saying. No, the scientist who who found out the human genome was a Christian and still is. So I'm just saying you can be still Christian and believe that the Big Bang was created by God and still use Darwinian theory and DNA and all that stuff and still believe in that. No, so no you can't. Saying, you can. I think there are scientists that do that. Oh, okay, you can't. Darwinian evolution is completely opposed to every religion. Well, you know, there's religions for everything. So there's probably a religion out there who believes in in, their, in Sean, Darwinian Sean, theory. Sean. I'll say it Sean again. Sean's fallen, Sean, because... I believe, he, I believe now he realises he's out of his depth and he's just saying whatever comes into his brain, to be honest. Because well, no, what you're not there's doing, Sean, ideas. Sean, what you, what you should have done at least once... Oh, really? I didn't know that. Oh, is that true? Wow, I should look at that. Oh, but you're just saying things that are coming into you. I can ask how old you are, Sean, if you don't mind me asking. Uh, 29. You're 29, really? I don't believe that. I well, don't know, I've seen a picture. No, no, I, I saw Sean's picture. Yeah, Sean's got a big video, and he's got a big beard and everything. I think he's yeah, not a young, yeah. young kid. Sean, a... just, Sean, just, could, could I just ask some foundational questions here, if that's okay? Yeah, of course, Sean, just. Okay. Because okay, I'm a little bit confused, right? Do you accept that you exist? Yes. I'm conscious. Do you accept that mind. other people and the world exist? Yes. Okay. Do you accept that we had to come from something? Yes. Do you accept that time is a construct? Um, I'm not a. I wouldn't know much about the science of time. Okay. Yeah, but Einstein. Time and all is that not stuff, a quantity that we can change. It's not something physical. It's just the pattern of time that we come. Would you agree? Yeah, with I'm that? conscious of time. Yeah, I'm conscious of time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, you, you do recognize that the further we go back in time, the less things exist. Would you agree? Less people, less worlds, less suns. The universe compresses. Would you agree with that? Well, yeah. If you go all the way back to the Big Bang, there was nothing. Yeah, then Big Bang, Bang. Right. Right. So there was nothing. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, so in philosophy, there is something known as modal logic, M-O-A-D-A-L, modal logic. This is what Hamza was speaking about earlier. Everything falls into three categories. Either it's contingent, non-contingent, or necessary. Do you remember that? Um, sorry there, I don't understand. What, oh, okay. Contingent means not real, real or something like that. It's possible. It so contingent sorry. means possible. It doesn't have to exist. It could exist or not exist. It's not required for it to exist. Okay? 
Okay. So you have you have something which is possible. Like you and I, we are humans. We don't have to exist, but we do, right? Our parents decided to get happy one night, and now we're here. Alhamdulillah. Then you have things which are impossible and cannot exist, like a squared circle. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, that probably can, but it could exist in a parallel universe. You never know. It it can't because it's irrational. A square circle cannot exist. It's by definition a contradiction well, that would violate it, it, the second law of logic. It, it's uh, it's in your imagination, so it could ex- it's, it's possible. It can't imagination exist whatsoever. Can be real. How, you, how many sides it? of the square circle? Well, there is mathematical. There is like. No, in your imagination, in your imagination, how many corners does a square circle got? Infinite, infinite. A square circle has infinite corners. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, you're trying to find the 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 corners in the circle, is it? No, you're trying to find. No, no, no. You said a square circle. So how many corners does a square circle? (laughs) I'm confused. Sorry. All right. No, skip that. Skip that. No, I'm not skipping. No, 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 no. Don't skip. How many corners does a square circle got in your mind? Square circle, wait. So it's a square, but it's a circle. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm trying to find Sean, a square. Sean, you anyway, have, just can't, can't s- imagine it. Yeah, you that can't imagine circle, it. Can't you just said Thank you couldn't imagine it, and now you can't you. imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So you got me there. So you, so think, yeah, things fall into three categories: possible impossible and necessary i'm not going to use the word contingent because that confuses some people possible impossible or necessary you and i were possible we don't have to exist then there's impossible like a square circle and then there is necessary something which causes everything else to exist we happen to call that god you don't have to call it god but we can call it the primary agent the thing which causes every other thing to exist do you agree that nothing existed at some point um, I'm not sure. Well, you didn't always I, I, exist, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was probably so nothing can, once, yeah. No, we know for certain there was nothing once because nothing. We're talking the about the beginning, the Big Bang thing. We're talking about the Big but Bang. But no, we're not going to the Big Bang. Forget the Big Bang. That's just co- something causal. I'm saying when you go back to the very start, there is no time. There is nothing. Can you imagine nothingness? Yes. No, you can't because it's nothing. <laughs> it's, it, it's the absence of time, space, matter, all of these things. It didn't exist. And then it began to exist. Do you agree? Okay, yeah. Right. So the universe can't self actualize itself into existence because it's not eternal. It doesn't have the attributes to do so. Right. Uh, So we know that that time, matter, space, these are limited quantities. It is illogical that you can get something uh, uh, unlimited from something limited. Do you understand? So you're saying that time and matter are are limited, you think? And thus they created quantities. They had to originate from something somewhere at some point. But how would you... Maybe or my theory is maybe it could have been limited, no, unlimited, unlimited because maybe the Big Bang got recycled, so it 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 got no, that, big, then that it blew up, the, it got big again, then blew up. Yeah, Sean, that doesn't solve the so problem because it had to have. Sean, that doesn't solve the problem because that had to start at least once before. In order for it to be recycled, it had to be cycled once before, so it must okay. have had a definite start at some point. Doesn't matter how many times you restart it. So but something maybe we don't have the answer that to that initial start. Oh, okay. We let's do. say there was a. Let's we say there is the a answer. start. Let me introduce you to religion. Okay. So there's loads of different types of religion. Which one's right? How would you know? Yeah, how would I know? <laughs> I need science <laughs> to prove it. <laughs> My connection is a bit bad. Sorry, guys, I have to restart, I have to reload. Can Hamza continue? Or Abbas? No, no problem. Uh, you, 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 you're nearly correct. You could use the logic, isn't it? To determine yeah, I need which logic. is true or not. Yes. So you'd look at who's making the claim and, and why you should believe it. Yeah. 
So you need logical brain, which is not everybody can have, and everybody has the. Well, no, we can look at we can look, use, we can use rationale, mate. So we can ask ourselves: This creator is it one creator or is it multiple creators? <laughs> well, there's different there's different theories. That's for sure. I, well, yeah, uh, the, point, the point is. Does the creator is it necessary for the creator to be one creator or multiple creators? Okay, well, I'm going to talk about the scientific. So the science say there is no creator, or there is a creator, but it's not like God; it's something else. Like well, they, well, they but they can't say that because they don't know. Yeah, they don't know. Yeah, so they're so they agnostic. They can't make any. That. They can't affirm anything. So they're an agnostic on that point, but everything else is not. Uh, Sean, we're picking up a lot of uh, we're picking up a lot of sound on your microphone. I, is it possible that you could try to use a different mic, or perhaps just try to move it slightly to see if it gets better or whatever? Or um, is this better? I took it oh, off. That's a, that's a lot better, actually. Yeah, that's <laughs> should, better. I should have asked you. I should have asked you that ages ago. <laughs> I was thinking about it. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Actually, that is a lot better. Yeah, go on right. So we we agree that science cannot determine if there is a god, which god it is is true, which religion is true. Yeah. Yes. But we can look at the claims made by those who claim their religion is true and determine whether or not it's true or not. Yeah. You. you how how you, do you test a belief? I mean, I follow a lot of um, religious channels. Like I listen to what's his name Myth Vision. He's like an ex-Christian. Ex, he, uh, he talks nonsense. Anyway, what I'm saying is, how would you test a belief? Well, you have to criticize it. You got to think about no. it critically first. You got to ask questions. No, no, no. Critical, you, how critical do you thinking. How do you test it? All right. How do you test a belief? Go on then. How do you test a belief? You ask critical questions like... Um, like what? How do you prove the? So you ask all these critical questions of the the the, the, the stories and the the. the you can't, the you can't books. keep asking critical questions. I'm asking you as a principle, and I'm not just talking about religious belief. Now I'm talking about any belief, anyone's right. belief. How do you right. test the credibility of their belief? You have to ask critical questions. So you you're you're interested in it. So you ask them. Oh yeah, you sure about that? No, so they'll like try and explain it to you. <laughs> no, that's not what you. <laughs> All right, let, let, let me explain something to you quickly. All right, when you say you believe something, what you're saying is you accept this thing to be true. You're saying you're convinced this thing is true. You're tr you trust okay. this thing is true. Is true. The word all right. these words are synonymous with the word belief. Yeah. Okay. So, so when you accept something to be true, it means you've accepted a proposition. You've heard a proposition. You've heard reasons to support that proposition, and you've believed those reasons are good and true. Yeah. And you accept that belief based upon the foundations of its reasons. Yeah. Its reasoning. Okay. Right. So if you want to challenge that same belief, you need to challenge the reasoning behind it. So you need to challenge the reason. So if, if you say, I believe such and such a thing, which is what you did, and I ask you the question, why do you believe so? I'm doing exactly that. I'm challenging your premises, your foundations, your reasons for holding what you're holding on to. And to be honest with you, Sean, you found a little bit wanting. You're just hoping you know, that scientists have got the answers. I'm not a very good atheist. I'm, I'm just... No, 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 uh, no, no. Sure. But... So I'll give you an, I'll, now I'll just give you an example. So a Christian can come along and say, forget Sean, Sean, forget what these Muslims are banging on about. Christianity is true. Jesus died for your sins. Here's a golden ticket to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. You're saved. John, just believe that and you're saved. These Muslims don't know what they're talking about. They're fake prophet. They're, they're Quran and such. Yeah. Now, the question that would be asked by you, Sean, is what? Which one is real? No, <laughs> which religion no, is no, correct? No, 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 no. What did I just teach you, Sean? When somebody comes to oh, you, sorry, I forgot. Beliefs. Oh, you ask them critical beliefs. questions. You ask them questions. No, you ask them why they believe that thing is true. Oh, why yes, do they okay. believe Jesus died for their sins? Why do they believe they got the golden ticket to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory? Why do they believe this thing? And they'll tell because you because the Chelsea fans. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> they'll, they'll tell you. It's because the Bible says so. And then what's the next question, Sean? 
how do you know the the Bible is 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 created by God? No, no. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, the Jesus, the, the prophets, is a reliable source of information. Oh, the Paul and all the the, the apostles no, were no, they no. telling lies? They'll say, they'll say they'll say it's the word of God. And you'll ask them, why do you believe it's the word of God? They'll go to some verses in the book to try to support it with their circular reasoning. You'll explain a few things to them that this doesn't support what you're saying. And now what you've done, you've taken away all the foundations for that belief. Because the reasons they were holding that position, you've taken up all the scaffolding. Yeah. Now what happens, Sean, is if they still believe it, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary, that belief becomes delusion. Yes. Because delusion is believing in something despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. So some people have an emotional attachment to something, even though the facts are saying, You're talking nonsense, mate. But they love the idea of it. You're delusional, mate. Okay. So here's what I'm saying to you, Sean. Now, you could do that to every religion. I'm saying that as a Muslim, yeah? But I would reverse it. Because if Islam is true, everything else is false by default. And you just need to find the weaknesses. Because if Islam is true, Jesus didn't die for nobody's sins. There's no monkey gods and Hindu and thingy gods going on. Do you get me? There's only one religion, which is Islam, if Islam is true. Yeah? That means the idea of Darwinian evolution evolving from Nemo is out the window also. So all you need to do, Sean, is to challenge Islam. Oh, there's plenty of people challenging Islam. It's growing, I think. Give me an example of one challenge to Islam. Well, there's apostate prophet. There's loads of ex-Muslims. I heard it's growing. (laughs) Ex-Muslims are growing. What's the challenge? Well, there's probably others too. Like, I I follow apostate prophet. What's the challenge that's done? What's the gotcha moment? What's the, oh, this demonstrates Islam is false? What, well, I also I also criticize other religions. I'm not only against what no, Islam, no, but asking I, about Islam, there is nothing that Apus has ever brought that has found difficulty with Muslims responding to it. In fact, Brother Farid responds did what fifty videos responding to every single significant claim that he could possibly muster, and Apus could not respond. It took two years for him to try to, and even dismiss the majority of it. There is no, I don't think that there is a single legitimate criticism of Islam that will stand up to muster. And if you have one, Sean, we're asking you to present the best one you possibly have. If you say you watch Apus, then you must know his best argument. What is his best argument? Come on. Well, I won't. I won't share the the country. The, the, there's a there's a lot of of well, critical things give the, give that, the that best, are in the Bible that are quite one, controversial. Sean. There give is the controversial Bible. things in the Bible. I mean, give the, the Quran. The Bible. Sorry. No, give us the oh. most significant claim no. against Islam, Sean. Come on. No, no, he just, said it, he, just said it, he just said it. He just said it. Sean, tell me the most critical thing in the Quran you can think of. Well, there the Quran, is quite right? controversial things in the Quran, so, but I haven't read the Quran, sorry. So, um, okay, critical, not controversial, critical. That you, so, hold on, hold on. You dismiss Islam because of Apos, but you concede you haven't read the Quran. That doesn't seem like logical thinking to me. But please give us the most critical verse in the Quran that you think undermines Islam. Um, let me think now. Um, think hard. Think hard. You're dismissing an allowing idea. allowing to marry argument. your cousin. Is that is that in the Quran? Allowing to marry your cousin. <laughs> or is that in the hadith? Sean, Sean. I'm not expert. Mind, sorry. You know, I live in England, yeah. Ireland. I live in England. Okay. You live in Ireland. Yeah, you look Irish. Oh no, I'm English. I'm English <laughs> Are you Irish? Are you Irish? No, I'm English. You Irish? Okay. You... <laughs> yeah. No, I'm half French, half Irish. So you are all right. In Ireland, can you marry your cousin? Uh, you you can probably, but I I don't think it's uh, morally acceptable. According to who? You're an atheist. Where do you get your morals from? According according to tradition and morals tradition. and tradition. Scientific, scientific evidence as well. Scientific, what scientific reasons evidence? as well. About. Well, it, the, the science of if you do too much inbreeding, it's no good for the off, offspring. R- right. So so marrying your cousin is legal in Ireland. Marrying your cousin um, is legal in England. Yeah. Your first cousin. Okay. Yeah? So you could marry 
the daughter of your father's sister. And your morals okay. are based upon... And so where did you, you get your morals from? Well, you could technically, if, let's say, the future... Let's say in the future... Sure, 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 sure. We're right saying, now, what is your moral standard guide? Where did you get your moral guidance from? The majority of it comes from religion, but a lot of it also comes from common sense, like uh, okay. evolution. Like, we have innate feelings. We all feel pain, so we get our morals from the experiences we get from... That's not how Pain morals and... work. That's Sean. not morality. That's like, for example, Hamza hurts my feelings when he doesn't support Chelsea Football Club. That doesn't make it morally wrong. <laughs> yeah. Feelings don't count as facts or laws, Sean. Come on. We all know this. I've got, okay. actually, I've got a really, really controversial question I could ask you, and I'll we'll just put you right. All right, go on. Me. Tell me. Because you were saying something along the lines of, Science says it's no good for you or it's bad for society or something like that, yeah? Oh, Hamza, yeah, I know the genetics, genetically no, no, wise. No. I know what you're going to Oh, ask you're talking Hamza. about incest with, with your brothers and sisters now, yeah? Something lighter. No, oh, I'm staying within the law. I'm staying within the law. Pedophilia. No, oh. no. What's no, wrong sorry. with you, Sean? No. Sorry. Uh, the morals, no. You're talking about morals. Sean. Sean, it's all subjective Sean, when you think about it. Sean, scientifically, scientifically, there's certain... Se- You're going to say it much nicer than me. <laughs> like, 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 Sean, think of it. Uh, do, do you know... Uh, 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 do you know Wayne Rooney? Yes. Right, if he married someone like 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 uh, Dominic Cumberbatch or Boris Johnson, would that be scientifically okay or would they cause harm to each other? Well, according to our modern morals, it would be kind of strange, but they would accept it because it's not... Not morals. I'm asking about scientifically. Would they scientific harm. Any... Scientifically, if they married, no, if no, you were no. to and apply they, the scientific method, they consummated uh, the marriage. it would be fine. They consummated, be fine. Consummating, consummating the marriage. Yeah, it would be fine. Yeah, it, if you were to apply the scientific method, you would have to... Yeah. I don't know, do some like, scientific experiments. <laughs> well, they have done experiments, Sean, and that's the problem. The incident rate of UTIs and infections, the incident rate to anal tearing, and the incident rate to, to hemorrhaging in that area is more significant among one population than the other, including the STI and STD rates. In fact, Oh, yes, you're talking all... about homosexual. Yes. <laughs> well, Wayne Rooney married <laughs> Boris Johnson, kind of give that away. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got me there. Oh, yeah. So you're saying that gay marriage is probably not very good for your health. No, is it? Is it good for a society? First thing. Well, okay. Let's say scientifically, the 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 act itself is probably not very healthy. It is very pleasurable scientifically. It's scientifically proven that it's very. I heard that the male G spot is up the bum hole. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. But uh, okay. I can be wrong. I'm going to I'm gonna have to step in here. Sean, look, uh, we're, we're sort of drifting no, into let territory. Let me just say no, this no, without, without we're, we're that. We really are drifting into Sean, areas Sean, where Sean, I don't Sean. think we should be. So it just says something. Just Sean, Sean. What you just said then, right? That's just so when you use the toilet, it's a pleasurable experience and it's not hard. See, oh, the, no. the back I... passage, the back passage, yeah, is one way. <laughs> It's one way. It opens that okay. way. You go the other way. No, but you I, it open. No, but I, I saw. I heard. No, I could be wrong. I'm not. I haven't looked into it. it it's have too you controversial for done me. this exam? Have you personally done this exam? Scientific experiment yourself, Sean? No, I heard that the male G spot is up there. So I don't know. Uh, could be wrong. <laughs> okay, Sean. Look again. We're going into territories that I think are, quite frankly, that are one way. Going- no, 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 but the thing is, Abbas, I know what you're saying. The territory yeah. is is obviously a bit a bit uh, saucy. But the point being made is, is standard. The morality that Sean is saying is based upon, oh, marrying your first cousin is wrong because of what will happen to generations of society. And that, yeah. Um, and so you should then also be against homosexuality for the same reasons. Yeah, but the, you could have scientific answers to that like uh contraception like a condom same thing with cousins 
Yeah, you could. You could. Yeah, you can have sex okay, with your right, cousin, but right, you don't have Sean, a kid. Sean, uh, Sean, listen, guys. Uh, Sean, you don't need to use contraception if your two males are, you know, because you can't get pregnant. Stuck but anyway, lot of us. but, but anyway, look, guys. Look, before we go into t- Sean, the whole conversation started from you saying that you're more atheistic. You believe in science. You believe science will find the answers. The point, Sean, is that science may or may not find answers, but science has also said we may never know what came before the Big Bang, what came before the beginning of the universe, because that might be as far back as we can possibly go, which I think intuitively probably makes sense, because how would you know what happened before the beginning of time and space as we understand it, right? So the point, Sean, is this. Does that mean that we just simply say, well, we don't know, and I'm just going to reserve my opinion? Or do we say, well, okay, that's very interesting, but what could have been the possible ways that the universe could have come into existence? So there are some rational things that you can do uh, and and, and um, uh, ponder on, and then possibly come to what you feel seems like the more more plausible, the more reasonable explanation. So, for example, the universe could have always existed. The universe could have come into existence from another material cause, or the universe came into existence from a supernatural cause. There are only a very few possibilities as to how something might come into existence. And this is called using deduction, uh, using uh, premises that are logical, that are rational, and then coming to some form of a conclusion. And that does not necessarily mean that you'll understand the reality of everything, but it simply means that you can come to a reasonable conclusion based upon reason as to how something might have happened. Now, when we look at science and what science is telling us, that the universe came into existence uh, from non-existence. There wasn't a universe there before. Or science might say that this is a group of a multiverse, i.e. infinite universe, which simply still states that there has to be something outside of this material existence that has to explain how this all got here. And whatever that thing is, Sean, cannot also have a um have a an explanation outside of itself or have something that is responsible for its existence because you simply then go back and back and back and eventually you have to get to a point where there has to be a necessary existence because if you go back infinitely you'll never get to the present time that we're in today because if you're always l- walking backwards You can't go forwards. You can't get to here because you can't traverse an infinite number of steps to get to where we are today. So what we're we're saying to you, Sean, is that these are philosophical questions. They're not necessarily questions that science is ever going to be able to answer. The existence of everything, how it got here. Science may tell you how things work. And so, Sean, what we're telling you to do is just think about that, contemplate about that. You don't need to be a scientist to to say, well, if this tennis ball exists, where did this tennis ball come from? Well, let me look at what it's made from. If it's made from rubber and made from plastics or uh, fabrics or whatever it might be, then that might give you a clue, an explanation as to where it might have come from or who might have manufactured it or made it, right? And just as, Sean, you said, you would never assume that the tennis ball simply always existed or simply came into existence from nothing. It is not unreasonable to follow those same principles when it comes to the existence of the universe, that it too must have had a reason, a cause of its existence. It is dependent upon different things such as hydrogen, helium, iron, etc., etc., and they have to have come from somewhere, okay? And ultimately, whatever created everything cannot be created. Otherwise, it cannot be the creator of everything. So there has to come a point where there has to be something, a necessary existence. 
So do you think those co- those those converse, do you think that's rational? Do you think that's a reasonable assumption to arrive at, Sean? And if not, can you explain why not? So you're basically saying that God created everything, but that God was never created. What, what you're not, trying to what, say? What I'm saying to you, Sean, is that if we apply our logic and reason, there has to be something that is a necessary existence. I'm not mentioning God at the moment. Or the Big there Bang has, or whatever. Whatever it might be, there has to be a necessary existence that caused everything. A beginning, yes. Okay. A beginning yes. for everything, right? Right. Now, the point, Sean, is that when we look at the universe, like Hamza said, it points towards an organizer, a designer, a creator, uh, it, it points to a, towards an intelligence. The universe came into existence at a certain point in history. Therefore, it requires a will to do it at a certain time. And it requires something incredibly powerful, far beyond the imagination or, 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 or our ability to measure. And when we look at all of those qualities, Sean, what that sounds very much like is a creator that created everything with an intelligence and a will to create. Okay, you're saying that God could have created everything, but you don't know if God himself was ever created. Uh, okay. Never know. So, Sean, Sorry. Let, me, let me ask you a question. Let, you me ask you, let me ask you the question, Sean. Can, can the first cause of everything be itself created? Yeah. And then can, something creates some, uh, infinitely something well, well, creates. So how can it so be the first cause? Then? How, how can hypothetically, it be the first cause, Sean? How can it be the so, first So let's cause? say hypothetically, God is created by something else. Sean, 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 Sean I asked you a rational, a, a logical question. Can the first cause of everything itself be created? You could, you could take uh, hypothetically how say so. Yeah. The, okay, one second. How, how can it be? How can it be the, sorry, Hamza, let me just sorry. Uh, how, Sean, how can it be the first cause if it itself is also created by something else? It can't be the first cause, then can it? I guess not. No, it's it's infinite. If infinity, oh. I would be describing infinity. I guess, yeah. Okay, so if you're now saying that there are an infinite series of causes. Can we That's my arrive, theory. Anyway, I could be wrong. Can we arrive to today where we are talking today? I don't know, man. We could be living in a parallel universe. It's all Matrix. It's all Illuminati. Okay, but Sean, don't, Sean, <laughs> bus, bus. If, Sean, Sean, if you're prepared to, Sean, if you're prepared to go into areas where you have absolutely no evidence whatsoever, aliens, whatever it might be, Sean, right? Then, then basically, what you're doing, Sean, is you're saying to me. I'm not going to think about these questions and I'm never going to accept the existence of a creator. And what I'm going to do is make every excuse under the sun to believe something else, but I won't accept it. No, no. Okay. I'll accept that there could be one creator. Okay. There is a possibility there could be one, but there's also a possibility that could be other. Okay. So Sean, Hamza said to you, Hamza said to you, if there is that possibility, how would you be able to, yourself discover I would need, the, the reality I would, of that I would use science I would use science to okay, find right, right. Sean, so please, Sean, it, was ni- Sean it was nice to have you on but I, I just um, uh, to be perfectly honest I, I, I think um, you know we are running in circles here because we explained to you the scientific method we explained to you that it's it based on philosophical naturalism and yet you still want to use a, 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 a hammer to make custard and it's not going to happen Sean, and that's the problem, you see. So uh, with, with all due respect, I mean, I, I don't want to be rude, but I think perhaps perhaps this conversation is perhaps a little bit um, uh, something that maybe you haven't maybe studied uh, sufficiently on, uh, but I, I feel that we're perhaps running into circles. But, Sean, what I would, what I would suggest to you, Sean, is this, uh, before you go, is that if you do assert that there is a possibility that there is a creator, then I would suggest to you, Sean, humbly, that you do a little bit of investigation as to whether this creator has indeed tried to contact human beings to inform us, to tell us, to guide us to have the best possible life and give us the 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 the, the questions that so many of us have, which is it could be an alien too, it? like right. So why am I here? Where am I going? Is this is this it oh. basically? And, and and what you would do, Sean, like Hamza said, 
is that you would assess the claims, you would assess why is this believable, why should I believe it, and you should come to a rational conclusion based upon your investigation and your knowledge as to whether there is a merit, whether there is a good reasons and a, a reasoned argument to believe that this is the truth. But I believe, Sean, what you shouldn't do is jump to aliens or jump to anything else because yeah, even to, aliens, aliens require because... a cause and they require a universe. Where the aliens come from, Sean? Exactly. So I'm going to run in, we're going to run in circles. <laughs> but, but Sean, God. anyway, Sean, it was a pleasure yeah. to have you on uh, um, somewhat. All right, thanks. We'll, we'll, thanks we'll, for having me. We'll, 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 you have a good night. Before you go, just you're 29. Yeah? Yes. I accepted Islam when I was 27. Um, I was the kind of thing similar to you, not as stupid as you, but similar to you. Um, <laughs> I used to use my brain and internet a little bit more. Um, and mashallah, 20 years ago, I accepted Islam. So there's hope for you, mate. But unless, unless you think it's all a joke and when you're dead, you're dead and that's it. And you and you worm food and that's it. Then you're all right, aren't you? But if you're wrong, then what? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of sad when you think about it that way. But I hope there's something else out there. But I don't know. Well, no, here's the thing. Right, you I, understand, I understand why you're the way you are, because you've had so much dogma from the Catholic Church that you just feel you're done with dogma. But I, you know, you know there's a creator. You just know it. Anyway, latest, dude. All right. Well, Sean, remember, there's no atheist on a crashing plane, yeah? Indeed. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. You have a good night. Bye-bye. I think somebody watching that could have benefited from it, to be honest. I think there was, you know. <sighs> I, I think, I mean, to be honest, and I, and, I, and I would say this to people, I mean, he mentioned that he watches and he listens to um, – to to um, um, apostate prophet, apus, whatever his name is, I don't know, I don't care, quite frankly. I mean, it would be like going to the Ku Klux Klan to learn about Christianity, you know. Um, probably no, even, no, no, it's not that probably worse than that, in fact, you know. Uh, it, the, the reality is that, you know, do you go to somebody uh, who time and time again has been uh, disproven time and time again, to be shown to be insincere, uh, illogical and irrational, makes up stuff. Uh, and as I say, Farid has done, doesn't, Farid responds, has done, I think virtually he went through all his videos and he responded to pretty much every point that he raises. And it was quite frankly embarrassing. And when Muhammad Hijab, for example, went onto the show with the two American brothers, I, I forget their channel name now, but... And then suddenly Ridwan was having anxiety attacks. He was holding his side and he was in pain and he, he was literally having an anxiety attack afterwards uh, because Hijab challenged him upon his views uh, and completely managed to intellectually uh, destroy what he was saying, basically. Um, and, and so this is an embarrassment. And if you're going to turn to these sort of people to get guidance from about what Islam is about, I mean, really, uh, it, it would be tantamount to you, you know, you, you say you're a person of science and what have you, you know, somebody like, like me, maybe, for example, you know, I'd be sweeping the streets or something and you start coming and asking me about quantum physics or something. You, you wouldn't do that because that would be an idiotic thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. To go to somebody who's ignorant, clearly about. But, but then, of course, if these people simply feed your predispositions of what you already believe, then you're going to lap it up. Lap you're going to literally. You're going to. Have, you're acquiring a taste for 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 for, for stupidity. For, for, and me, for me, where the parasite got exposed big time, big time, is when he's asking us for to find an historical event that occurred in history in a book that he himself doesn't accept is a reliable source of historical information. That's just madness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these it's people to me, these for me, these people are nobodies. Uh, they they are begging people uh, to support their channels for money, and the way they get their money is by basically doing what people want to hear. So they go on anti-Islamic rants, um, and that's their living. That's how they make their money. And when 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 they get taken off or they get challenged or they get banned or they get insulted because they're talking rubbish, 
they don't like it because it's their livelihood. That's how they make their money, basically. Yeah. Um, One thing about Sean, I think, and I think we kind of because we moved into other territory. But yeah. the worst thing he could find in the Quran was that you can marry your, your cousin. This is this is some kind of critical evidence against Islam. It's just ridiculous. Now, people in the chat, some of them saying, oh, I didn't learn anything. What you should have learned, there's a couple of things that could be learned from that discourse we just had. One, if you're somebody who's like Sean, who's thinking like Sean, maybe you'll start questioning a little bit more heavier as to why do you believe what these old men say and write in books? And I'm talking about your scientists, yeah? And then, you know, the book I keep putting up, The Return of God Hypothesis, is devastating for the neo-atheist. Devastating. The idea as science has been turned on its head. Science is evidence for God. I don't know um, what Abbas said is that uh, it's like making custard with a hammer. I get that. But the point here is this. What's, what the science is doing is saying there must be something other than a natural explanation. There must be. Because we can't explain these things. And we can't explain DNA. We can't explain quantum mechanics. The more, we, the more we're discovering, the more complex everything is becoming. We thought the further down the road we get, the more we'd understand and the more we could dismiss God. But now if you're looking at it, we need bigger explanations now. What's going on? Do you, do you know what I mean? So uh, hopefully, so there could be people like, who've been thinking that way. Alternately, there should be Muslims watching this now thinking, wow, this is this is gold, this stuff. What Ijaz said, what Abbas said, what I said. That when you come across these type of Sean's in your workplace or whatever, you demolish them. You, you show them that, first thing, you've got no intellectual, uh, reasonable, logical higher ground than me. Because they think they do. And what you should have learned from that discourse is just to take that rug from under their feet, man, because they've got nothing. So I think there was much to learn from that, to be honest. And, and to be honest, you know, the other thing is that, and, and, and I would say this as well to the brothers and sisters, you know, go on to Discord, go on to uh, other channels and encourage people to come on the show. Sorry, just we, one second. Yeah. Hamza on his live stream had an anxiety attack facing me. When have I ever had an anxiety attack? Ever. I don't do anxiety. Adam Adam, who the hell are you? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but if Adam, and if Adam Adam is uh, so um, confident, that, you know, he's so good that he gives people anxiety attacks. Where is he? Welcome, welcome to the stream. You, the link is below the uh, YouTube uh, video on YouTube. Uh, you know, you just link, uh, click the link, and you'll be straight into. We'll the make studio. an exception for you, Adam. We said no more guests. We'll take you. We'll actually take you on if you if you want to do it. So please don't be a keyboard warrior. Um, uh, we, I mean, the, look, the, the, the thing is, obviously, the discussions can only be as fruitful as the guests that we have on. Um, and, um, you know, it, we, we, that's something that we find difficult to control. We would much rather that a lot of Christians and a lot of people of religion and of no religion, atheists, do come on to the stream uh, and, 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 and give us why they believe what they believe. But the reality, I think, is time and time again that these streams are, are quite successful, alhamdulillah. You know, we have 1,500 plus people watching live to now. Um, and, you know, by the end of the stream, it's normally thousands. And sometimes within a week or two, two, three weeks, it's 30 or 40,000. But the point here is this. Uh, if atheists, if um, people of other, other faiths and other religions were super confident on their position, then they would come onto these streams because it's a great platform where there are a lot of people listening. But what we find is that people have, uh, <clears throat> over the past um, few months or whatever, they realized that actually Islam, the arguments for Islam are very, very robust. And it's very difficult to come and attack Islam. I mean, you know, Dr. Imran and Hamza, myself, you know, we have all these people sometimes coming on previously. Uh, about the black stone or about slavery or about this or about and then those questions are answered in a very very detailed way and so they realize that their objections actually are very untenable and so often they don't come on i mean the, the historicity stream that we do on the sunday that's a classic example where we've been asking the christian academics come and tell us where, where we're wrong where we've misquoted where we're misrepresenting christianity and uh, you know um uh, our, our friend Frank wants to come on every week and, uh, you know, um, and he does often come on and Rob comes on. Where, where are all the academics? Why don't they come on? Um, we, we're not one of those channels that just sort of shut the debate, shut the discussion. But they don't come on because they realize that the arguments are untenable. 
Uh, and Islam, the arguments for that are very, very strong. And as a consequence, despite the streams being, as I say, as, as, as popular as they are, um, we, we do struggle getting good quality guests on at times. So, uh, yes, yeah, so, do, so do encourage your friends and people to come on um, and, and try to, uh, you know, have a, a discussion with ourselves. Exactly. Uh, Asadullah. 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 alaikum, brother. Uh, they've always realized their positions are weak. Uh, that why that's why they spend so much time attacking, and that's absolutely true. Uh, that's absolutely true. Uh, you know, if you if you truly are confident in your position, then why don't you go on Asadullah uh, Asadullah's uh, yeah. Andalusian's project? You know, his 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 um, uh, discussions when he when he. I would allowed... correct the ending of that sentence. Sorry, sorry, uh, yeah. Asadullah. Most people they do know what they believe. They don't know why they believe it. I would say so. They in their minds they think they've got this belief, but they don't know why they've got this belief. So that, that's what I would uh, differentiate. Yeah, and I think I think to be honest, I thought that's right as well. There are people out there, literally what you call the state of ghafla, where you know they don't even know what they believe. Actually, that that not only do they not know why, they yeah, it's true. They don't even know what the really, heedlessness, the heedlessness. He- heedlessness, and when you ask them. Uh, they start to formulate their beliefs literally <laughs> once you've asked them the question because they, they're not even interested. And this is why we have to be very careful as Muslims and as non-Muslims that this life is a distraction. Allah, Allah tells us that, that, that this world, the worldly life, the wealth of this world, it distracts you. But Allah says, soon you will come to know when you visit the graves. And then Allah repeats that verse again to enforce and remind the human being, soon you will come to know when you visit the graves. So this world is a distraction. And this is why ghafla, heedlessness, is so uh, apparent in our, in our societies today. Endless consumption of box sets. Uh, just watching nonsense videos on whether it's YouTube or whether it's um, uh, what's the app where you just flip and watch video after video after video, um, TikTok, right? Where you can waste hours and hours of your time, right? And you, what you do then is you simply escape the reality of why you're here and where you have to go. And so Allah is warning us, don't let the life of this world distract you. And don't be living a life of heed, heedlessness and ask those questions, contemplate, because Allah has given you an intellect and knowledge so that you may find God, that you may investigate what your purpose of life is. Why are you here? Is there any evidence to accept these propositions of Islam, for example? And that is our purpose of life. So you, you have to, um, you have to, if you don't want to ha- be heedless, is just think about these things, contemplate about these things, search, and inshallah, the truth will set you free, as they say. Okay, so we've uh, we've gone um, uh, past midnight. Uh, Hamza, do you want to add anything? You've got the um, your your stream is uh, next Friday, right? Oh yeah, so uh, Sunday I'll be doing Sunday chill, probably. Um, been buried in scars, but inshallah, hopefully, I'll, I'll crawl out and be able to do a Sunday chill. Are you going to be um, having yeah. breakfast while you're doing Sunday chill, or probably, is it probably, probably breakfast? Yeah. And we always throw uh, breakfast in there. A bit of a mukbang going on. Um, I'm, I'm surprised that all those ladies buy all those scars with all the ketchup and everything. You must be spluttering all over them. No, the 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 Sunday lives at home, mate. Oh, is it at home? Okay, all right. Okay. I don't splatter breakfast. Right? Um, Monday, we're back on Return of the God Hypothesis. Um, with me and Yusuf Ponders, so we're, we're on chapter, f- I think it's five now. So last last time we did, it was like re- uh, Empire Strikes Back. So it was, it was the scientist's turn to, the atheist turn, should I say, to present their hypothesis. Um, and now we're moving back on to Return of the Jedi, which is going to be Return of the God hypothesis as to now how today we believers, we theists, are harnessing science and demonstrating to the atheists Actually, this this is against you. So, inshallah, I'll be reading that. It's a members only live, so you can only you can only engage in the conversation after the reading if you're a member. Um, and then we open the peasant gates after that, and then everyone can come. But then Yusuf's gone by then. All right, so that's Monday, inshallah, and then Friday uh, we got the arena, um, which is um, the guest lineup has been finalized. So Ijaz, Mansoor, 
Sheikh Mohammed and Asadullah and the Lucy Project, who's here. So, mashallah, nice lineup. So, that's for Friday, inshallah. So, that's what I got going on. Maybe I'll jump in the metaverse on Sunday. Oh, what we got Sunday? What, what, we're missing that. Yes, yeah, so on Sunday, um, I, I don't know whether it's the open forum or is it going to be um, the historicity? I think it's going to be depending upon. It should be historicity, it, isn't it? I think, yeah, and the, and the doctor possibly, but we'll see it. Historicity stream on Sunday, possibly. Uh, but we'll we'll inshallah advertise that as soon as we we know. So anything that 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 came out on the stream that was good, it was from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, from His guidance and inspiration. Anything that uh, we spoke of that we spoke incorrectly or bad uh, was from ourselves. Uh, please remember us in your duas. Uh, it, it was a pleasure on sun on Sunday. We I met a brother uh, that had met Brother Jordan um uh, prior to his visit at speaker's corner and it was a brother who was mashallah he was a mechanic um tall and handsome like brother jordan mashallah lovely brother very, lovely mannerism very articulate very intelligent mashallah and he said that um he just got interested and in wanting to find out and uh, one of i think his workers was muslim or whatever and uh, he then started watching some streams and what have you and alhamdulillah Allah guided him uh, to Islam, and he went to Regent's Park, I believe he said, and took the Shahada, mashallah. And so, w- one of the things that we want to remind our brothers and our sisters is that um, there, there are a lot of people out there who are contemplating and are thinking, and they do tune into the streams, and maybe they haven't taken their step yet to, to take the Shahada. And what we what we're doing, what the part of the reason, obviously, the, these streams is that we reach out to you as well. So. Please do email us for a free copy of a Quran. If you want to have a private discussion and just ask some questions, we'd be more than happy to uh, to, to talk with you. Uh, and let this be a reminder for our brothers and sisters that, inshallah, let's have good etiquette, good manners and good decorum uh, when we give our da'wah because there are lots of people out there, mashallah, who are contemplating about Islam. They're thinking about it uh, and they're found uh, and they're researching it. Uh, and and to all those brothers and sisters that are out there, um, I, I would say um, don't don't procrastinate or take your journey too slow. It's an it's a very the, the gravity of what you're potentially about to do is huge, uh, and so please um, rush your journey a little bit. Take a bit of vigor and a, a bit of passion and, and, and strength, and, and get it done quickly. Your, your investigation, and if we can help in any way. Uh, please feel free to email us. The, the email address is on the screen. Uh, may inshallah Allah guide us all uh, who are not guided and those who have already been guided to Islam. May Allah keep us on the on the straight path and forgive us for our shortcomings. Uh, Jazakallah khair, Hamza. With that, I think we can give everybody a, a big assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaikum. See you in the day.